practically every one of the top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. The psychedelic jackets on the record albums have their own hidden symbols and messages as well as all the lyrics of all the pop rock songs. And they all sing the same refrain. It's fun. This is a special request. Special request. We don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. We want you to smoke the real thing. We want you to smoke the natural herb. Some call it marijuana. Some call it sensor media. Some call it lamb's bread. And some people call it... Welcome to another episode of The Adam Dunn Show. I am your host, Adam Dunn. And I'm your co-host, Mitch Shinasa. And we are on our 43rd episode, I believe. Number 43, dude, we're catching up to your age. I know, we're, just getting, we're really close. When we pass your age, we're officially like a long-running show, I feel <laughs> I like, think right? I think that is official, because now I'm pretty old, so. Pretty old. Now, but I wonder how many people know. How old I am? Or yeah, I, I want to, if any listeners know how old Adam is... Come speculate in old, the chat room. Old, old as the hills, I think. So anyway, uh, last week's show was awesome, right? And uh, we definitely couldn't end it there. We had to kind of get deeper into this story because it's uh, it was one of those little you know epic things where things were starting to make sense to a few people and. Uh, yeah, I think we got how many? We've got so many new uh, subscribers. Yeah, What's I, going we're, on? I would definitely once we uh, once after we go through uh, the news segment. Ryan, you're gonna impromptu us some news. It sounds yeah, like yeah, I'm, I'm impromptu some news. Nice. Yeah. Seen. So after we do news, we'll get into that. But I'm very curious to see what Ryan pulls together for news in this one's pretty three and a half minutes. Yeah, I saw some stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, was also a cool week. Like we were, dude. We got filmed for Colorado Public Television. Oh yeah, that was pretty interesting. I That's it. sweet. Not like not like cable access, but when like PBS. Dude, last after the show last week, right? Yeah. Is that, so I was that's that guy that I was talking to last week when it started raining. No, different. We, we got filmed by a bunch of people. Now. Yeah, <laughs> we. But there's yeah. been a lot of filming happening. Of filming. No, but that was pretty cool, man. That was like PBS. I felt very like distinguished. You know, like that's classy company. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and. Uh, yeah, not only that, but just like uh, the p- amount of extra subscribers and all that. I mean, that yeah, no, that. that's let's that's. that's that. Let's talk about. Well, that. I do want to talk about that. About I mean, I am proud. First of all, because they're listening, hopefully. So shouts to the 100 new YouTube subscribers who started subscribing to the show this week. If you guys check out the show on YouTube, click the subscribe button because then you'll know when the new show's up. And uh, definitely also shouts to. Uh, Who's our, our awesome commenter buddy? Uh, Swayze's Ghost. Swayze's Ghost. I Swayze's just, Ghost. Brian, you, I don't want to hear it. I just told you. I don't okay. want to hear it from you. Swayze's so Ghost just, is the man. He comment bombed all our videos, bro. I just we're bro. listening to the same show then because when... D- dude, the, the, dude, uh, dude. Dude. Okay. Let, let it be. Swayze's Ghost. <laughs> I'm shout, not a woman. Shout out. Aubrey, right, shut it. <laughs> shout out. Uh, also, uh, shout out to our pre-show caller. I don't know if you wanted us to say his name. Our friend in New Jersey, Jersey. Jersey. yeah. Jersey I'll guy. say, our new friend in New Jersey. Jersey guy, the guy down in Jersey. You yeah, know what thank I mean? you for looking out. out. Thank you for emailing. Guys, you can always email us. We, it's just me and Adam. If you hit up the Facebook page, sometimes we get confused, and we always think the other one's going to read it, and then neither of us reads it, but I'm trying to read them now. Um, yeah, hit us up, and definitely we always love uh, reaching new people. Welcome to Welcome to the crew, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, and I think it was a lot to do with last week's uh, topic. Oh, the content was huge, dude. OG Kush, I mean, everyone knows OG Kush, right, Mike? <clears throat> yeah, where they or where they think they do. That's the other well, thing too. That's, that's the better do. part. Yeah, and, and then there are plenty of people who think they're the only ones who know OG Kush. Yeah, and um, but then we also it's it's interesting because what we what we figured out last week, which was you know it it's one thing to figure out. You know, like who was growing it and who was passing cuts around. Now it's trying to figure out behind the back side of it all, which is which is you know where the, all this stuff has to come from somewhere. You know, and right? And who, the whole leg- and the legend well, of the bag seed kind of makes it hard to. And can't. even chem dog, that was kind of the interesting tie-in too. Two the same sort of story, and we'll yeah, we'll get to well, that. Time, I think we got time, forty-five and, seconds, and we're going to do some shouts in the news. But let's say I think what I'd like to do right when we get back from the news is come into like all the tie-ins we found. Yeah. You know, like immediately after. Um, 
because there's so many to because I was skeptical, dude. When Dave was telling all that, I was like, I don't know this guy. As soon as we got off there, I was like, Who is this guy? That's a great story, but I is that true? You know, um, and he did give us all the names and facts, and I looked it up, and plenty of other people looked it up, and not only did it all add up with what was out there on the internet, but it added up with what a lot of other insiders were pe- were. Kind yeah, of saying. and I mean, and the thing that's the problem with the internet in general is, I mean, yeah, you can it lines up with a couple stories interconnected, but maybe not one long story. So, right, and yeah, we're just like uh, also the the reality though that you know the numbers of growers have exploded over the last you know. 30, Ten years? Five, well, well, I hope in the last 30 years, but like let's say over the last five years, it's good, and, and it's becoming exponentially exploding, you know what I mean? Because right. now people feel safe. They don't mind. You know, before it was like everybody had to be more clandestine, had to be more. And that's, you know, that's the, the interesting part of this is what Dave brought out was, you know, people putting serious money into something, like not messing around. Not even just serious money, serious effort, serious effort, thought, yeah, ex- exactly. like a whole which, different. Which is the level which I think all of us dreamed of back in the day, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's every, like, what everyone wanted to be you doing. You know, like the, like the one that, well, like, like I always say, that one place with the dugout, you know, if you can dig out like a huge space and nobody notices it and you can get power and do all of that and make it all work, you know, that's, that's, that's the effort I like to see. So, uh, Ryan found some really great news articles that, Boom. Oh, I mean, I'm looking at the first one. Don't get too cocky there. Oh uh, yeah, I know. It's okay. Uh, I found a great news article, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it one. ties in with our discussion from the other week on cannabis and gender and oh, the differences, I saw that one. I saw right? That. I was going to pull that. I had actually had that as a photo. Nice. So estrogen and cannabis, today's concentrated pot, risky business for women. It says there are sex differences in the development of tolerance to THC, the key active ingredient in cannabis, according to a new paper. Psychology professor Rebecca Kraft of Washington State University believes that estrogen levels are why female rats are at least 30% more sensitive than males to the pain-relieving qualities of THC and develop tolerance to the THC more quickly. These sensitivities could increase vulnerability to negative side effects like anxiety, paranoia, and I'm not even going to say addiction. That's ridiculous. I can't believe I said that. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Uh, Many unknowns, though, they say, right? Like Kraft notes that researchers like Margaret Haney at the Columbia University Medical Center have also found that women are more susceptible to cannabis abuse and dependence than men. Again, ridiculous. Haney documented a cannabis withdrawal symptom. I'm not even going to read this. I guess I have to in the interest of doing news. Cannabis withdrawal symptom of irritability, sleep disruption, and decreased food intake that Kraft says... Tends to be more severe and when dude, if you don't smoke, yeah, you're gonna be a little like there's Cranky. whatever. I'm yeah. not gonna debate it. Right. I'm not gonna debate it. Um, but despite the known differences in how marijuana affects the sexes, Kraft said most THC tolerance studies have been done only on males. So uh <laughs> a interesting thing. Uh males are more sensitive to get the munchies <coughs> than females. So I think I've I can confirm this anecdotally. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I wouldn't say a hundred percent or anything like that. Cause yeah. definitely seen chicks get munchies. <laughs> no, no, for sure, more, more. But, but the the munchie thing and the and the other part of it too, you know, like uh, there you I, that's kind of what started the discussion. It seems to affect or, or guys and guys and gals seem to smoke different, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, that was that. And this seems base. to say that it's thirty percent stronger for chicks. Thirty percent stronger than it is for us, and now we're back to chicks. You see how? That's what it, how I mean. That's I, I read the scientific like, version during now. that show. We had to like hold it, you know, better time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It says <laughs> that it's a little bit stronger for the chicks. Yeah, the go. dudes don't don't like the, don't what, get affected. What as else much. is here? That's awesome. I was thinking the opposite actually. I was thinking, but anyway, you thought it was stronger for dudes? Well, I thought we well stronger in the sense that we like liked it more, and they didn't get. The, the Dude, Robert Platshorn is out of prison. Who the hell is that? Robert Platshorn is getting high today. That is, he's going on an airplane. High Times called him up yesterday to say that he's been being gifted free tickets to this weekend's Cannabis Cup in Seattle. That's nice. The reason, after 28 years in prison Whoa. and six years on probation for smuggling weed, the West Palm Beach resident is finally a free man. Oh, grouper guy. Yes, ah, the 71 year old is part of the Black Tuna Gang, a sophisticated drug ring that became the Fed's first big bust in the war on drugs. So these were the guys, they were with the Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church. And that's, I mean, that kind of is, I don't know if that ties in with our story today. I'd lo- that's kind of what I want to get into with Dave, because, um, you know, we, there was them, the EZCC in Florida, and then there was the Brotherhood of Eternal Love in California. And in like the 60s, they were, to my knowledge, the bigger groups bringing stuff in. And 
clearly those genetics obviously started out from somewhere else. Um, so this all kind of ties together, and it's cool to see, uh, I don't know, that he's out of jail and able to, much like in the same period with Dave, like, come, we mm-hmm. should get him on the show, obviously. That goes without saying. Of course, of course. And, it's, you know, I guess now that he's smoking his first joints publicly, it's time to get the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on, he can actually come on the show. Maybe he comes to Denver. That would be cool. If he, Yeah, it would be cool to get him to Denver. Um so what else does Ryan have for us in the news? We got a few more minutes here. There's a whole bunch of them over there. You can choose a plethora. Of oh, the L.A. farmers market didn't last very long. Nope. No, Shut that, down. but because of coding violations or some bullshit. Or what uh, I don't know. I'm pulling up the article. Ryan, did you really happen to check that out? Oh, I did. Did you think I had time to read all? No, <laughs> the East Side marijuana farmers market that made huge headlines when it opened for the Fourth of July weekend has been ordered by a judge to stop operating. The preliminary injunction follows in it. Initial temporary restraining order granted after the L.A. City Attorney's Office took organizers to court and argued that the law doesn't allow dispensary operators to open their doors to suppliers who could then sell directly to patients, which is apparently uh, the structure they took at the California Heritage Market. So I think they had to— I thought it was private growers at that thing, so it's not— I think they had to get around— the fact that it has to come from a dispensary. So maybe hmm. they said that and it was really private growers. You know what I mean? I would have thought it would have been a private grower kind of thing. So, well, And then I would have figured they would have... Like a proper it. farmer's market yeah, type thing. Exactly. exactly. Why not? Well, either way, they would have shut that down too. Uh, what do we got here? FloridaToday.com. There's a, I mean, did you guys hear about that? The, the, the kid from Minnesota State, the, that football player that, that what was shot that? someone over that weed debt? What? Why well, would you bring did. up... So, so apparently, this um, the Minnesota State University football star. His name's Dennis Carter. I don't know. I don't watch college football, let alone professional football. But um, he's apparently a standout wide receiver for uh, for MSU. He faces the attempted murder charges for allegedly shooting a longtime acquaintance in the head over a marijuana debt. And that's why the black market's not so good, right? Exactly. Exactly. The incident occurred shortly before midnight on the twentieth of August. So I mean that's I mean if her, I mean there goes his whole career he was gonna he was you know if he was a good star and he he could have gone to the NFL. how much money could that guy possibly owe him for a week Oh I got a news story that Ryan didn't send me that I did read this morning Did you see that much like we keep seeing in Texas a hiker found Oh yeah a whole bunch of weed in, in Boulder, Boulder yeah, and then they like lifted it out with the Black Hawk helicopter Really Yeah and they just like brought it to like the municipal complex in Longmont which is kind of interesting because oh, yeah. that place is not secure <laughs> Where in Boulder was it it uh, was off some, a hiking trail, right? It was like a huge gorilla grow. In somebody's private land, though. Just some hikers found it. Great. Damn hikers. Damn hikers. So, so it was somebody's private grow, but it wasn't on their private property. So. Well, it was on. It was someone's private property, and then someone else was gorilla growing on it. Ah. Which, hey, gorilla growers, be conscientious. Do it on the government's land, Especially not on private people's do. land. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or like it. empty lots. In between the highway zones. And stuff. Yeah, don't do it. That would actually, like medians, I feel like you can't get away with that. Can you get Sometimes, away with that? I don't know. There's places that you know they don't really want to go up and deal with. They're like, walk by and go, hey, go up there to clean that up. You it's know? like graffiti. I see it's every the same, every same principle, I, right? Every time I'm in a train or on the highway, I'm always searching for that spot. You know, never, never actually it's do it. It's just like graffiti. It's like yeah. that one spot where you're like, I could definitely get up there and there's no way yeah. they're going to go through the effort. I always used to think that too, right off the side of the highway a little bit. No but, you know, then there's like a million people looking. Now it doesn't matter. Now you got Google Earth. They just like, yeah. we got it on last year's time. They have it on real time. So they're just checking over all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, so. They're like, do, 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 do. That looks like a grow. Yeah. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, man. I mean, so. Wouldn't think it was gonna work anymore. Yeah, it's but I I don't know about this season. Have you heard about a lot of busts this season yet? Um, I haven't really. Not really, but I think they, they don't last really season there was none, none, yeah, I know. not a one, you know. But this then season eight hundred dollars a pound. No, but the yeah, five hundred dollars a pound. Yeah, I mean it was the stuff was worth about. You know, maybe a thousand a pound on a good day, but well, then yeah. But once everybody also real, it was like it was also a difficult year too, though, wasn't it? it was well, there's the there. drought there, and that's the, I heard they were going to bust people for uh, like water, water usage yeah. and all that. So that's an interesting. Uh, yeah, Cali's in crisis mode right now with, with the water. It looks yeah. like. Yeah, so, and, and they blame they try to like blame it all on the growers, which is insane. 
it's not even really. I mean, it's actually more Southern California too, where it's it's that's natural, obviously, because there's not as much growing in Southern yeah. California as in Northern Cal. And no, it's, it's. But I saw the drought uh, map the other day, and it was incredible. It was like just a few years ago, it was a few spots, and now it was like three quarters of the state. You know? Yeah, it's not good. Not looking good. You know what I was thinking? We're we're gonna move on in a minute, but you know what I was thinking? All the water, you know, because I always think like the water cycle, like water evaporates, goes in the skies, rains down. So if you like waste water, whatever, goes in a reservoir, eventually it evaporates, goes in the sky, rains down. So you're not really like wasting water. But then think of like all the water, all the liquids in general, soda, Gatorade, whatever, sitting in bottles. Yeah. In Costco. and Trapping it. Yeah. Trapped water, basically. Trapped water that's out of the cycle. Somebody's going to buy that and drink it, though. So how is that wasted? Because there's definitely way more in warehouses for years and years to go than anyone's going to buy or drink right now. Isn't that, isn't that the point of... Yeah, but there's not water. We're like, there's there's not actual water. It's what plants crave, bud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. No, but it is... Uh, that's one of the ways that... That and then trapped bodies and is the other thing, right? Like humans, that's part of the problem with overpopulation, I learned, because we all trap whatever our 60% keeps- body weight... 60% of our body's water. So we're we're each sequestering some water. So we're wasting water just within ourselves. Just, God. yeah, when you have a waste of a person, it's a waste of water. Wow. Yeah. Man. Deep shit. Deep shit. Okay. Okay, so let's... Uh, so, uh, shout outs to Way to Grow. Yes. My understanding is that Corey's tuned in today, even. Awesome. Um, oh, did we get a special uh, update? Yeah, Corey, give us a, send us a sign. Oh, we do have a special update. Ryan, you know what the special update is, don't you? What special update? We have it in our emails. Yes, come on now. Pull up special update. We will give you the special update, and Corey, of course, is listening, because then that's when you... When we're you, when a, you we're a little off the cuff this week, because Adam lost his phone until... T- well, he still doesn't have it yet, but it was it found, found... Yes, it was found. ...moments before the show. <laughs> So yeah, we're we're uh, a little discombobulated. S- six shops all over Colorado. Uh, Waytogrow.net. If you need to get a delivery, they can do it. But you know, go down the shop, check out what they got. They got they had a, they had a big sale on uh, lights last week, twenty four ninety nine for a thousand waters, and then they had five ninety nine for T fives. I know that was last month's sale. So they're you know. You got it. You got it. Pulled it. You got no, it? I haven't pulled it yet, wow. Ryan. I'm gonna put you on pulling it. I don't have. You've never. Uh, n- 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 wow. Never sent me this file. No, no. CC sent it. CC <laughs> sent it. I did not send it. it doesn't exist. That was the this file worst doesn't exist. Shout out ever. Doesn't exist. Worst shout out ever. All right, we're gonna keep it going, guys. <laughs> Incredibles, right? Uh, no. Let's just keep rolling with the show oh. while we search for our materials. CC, uh, if you want to shoot that to Ryan, that would be great if you're listening. Cool. Uh, let's talk last week. So the results from last week were pretty huge. First of all, we have like almost 2,000 YouTube views on last week's episode. And shout out to everyone who's been posting the link, sharing the link. Please continue to do so. I think this is a story everyone's interested in, and hopefully we're getting some new spins on it and new light on it. Um, yeah, over 100 new subscribers on YouTube, about 100 new likes on the Facebook page, perhaps the same 100 people, perhaps different that's pretty awesome but as far as pulling things together so as soon as i got out of the studio i got a few contacts and emails one was uh from oregon kid which is pretty cool oregon kid is credited with being the dude who put out the you know was first posting the og kush clone only on ic mag and putting it out there right right and he said that he was listening in and when bubba's partner josh who was on in the first segment of the show was talking it gave him the chills because that was his crew who he hasn't talked to in like five years or some such Mm -hmm. and he freaked out man he was like wow like that was him i knew it as soon as i heard his voice that's where i got the og kush from right and he was like you didn't i was going to call in but you don't even need to have me on the show because that's really so he kind of externally hit me up to confirm that like yeah it's not just bubba matt saying like oh yeah i brought that from a bag seat from florida Mm -hmm. it's the guy who's credited with putting the clone out there saying, oh, my God, you found the guy I got it from? Right. You know, that's right. pretty awesome. No, and that's and, and that's why it's kind of, like, important because we're in that same phase where, you know, it's because it's becoming, uh, you know, accepted and openly and there's states that are going full on rec, people now really need, you know, need to kind of, if they're still in the game in any way, shape, or form, or if they have, you know, people around them that are in the game, they should definitely get credit and or be able to, you know, do what they do properly. What's that? 
We just got checked in by Cora. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Guys. I mean, it's oh, time. Oh, yeah, 25% for- off a of can of products. I did remember that. Yeah, grab your can of cocoa and your can. I was thinking of doing a can of run. Yeah, I know. So and- easy, so clean. Results are great. Awesome. And also, um, the- one of the things I loved about Canada back in Holland was that they have the best support of any company. So I'm sure really? if you call in from anywhere in the world and you have a problem with one of their products, they'll walk you through everything. Like they have a doc, they have a guy. Like whenever they do a show, you can really tell they 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 go out of their way. You know what I mean? They have they have a guy who'll answer all your questions, run you through stuff. You can send res- you can send in uh, samples, and in Holland you can send in cannabis samples. Oh, too. that's awesome! And they'll yeah. analyze them and tell yeah. you what to do. That's really cool. So they were really good. Yeah, they were the only ones doing that kind of stuff. So yeah. I definitely appreciated them in the industry for that. And like you said, real easy. Yeah, canna. It's so easy. It's so clean, and their bio line is is you know it's not living soil, but it's great. You know, organic nugs. And uh, way to grow. Also opening a new store in Silverthorne, Coloradans. Check that out. Um, so yeah, we're talking about. The recaps of oh of yeah, last new, week's and then there's a new shop coming to Silverthorne also. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just said that. Oh, I didn't yeah. hear that. <laughs> I, was re- <laughs> yeah. I was reading it something else. Bam, <laughs> doubled up on that. One. Cool. <laughs> I was all what? But I think there's uh, a new shop in Silverthorne, guys. I just wanted to let you know, just in hey. case. Dude, where is the new the shop? shop? Yeah, I think it's I'm in pretty sure it's in Silverthorne. There you go. Colorado. Listeners, Colorado. if anyone knows where the new shop is. No. Um, so yeah, the other cool cool things from last week. It was on the one hand uh, getting. Oregon kid to confirm. Now, the other thing was Ghost hit me up at the same time. Ghost is, for I think a lot of people who are in the know, consider Ghost OG Kush, you know, the the, the OG. Ghost bought that from Oregon kid, mm-hmm. who got it, you know, from Josh. Right. So, like, that is, now now the triangle's co- closed. Like, everyone's favorite Ghost OG. That's that cut. Like, yeah, exactly. Definitive, proven, stamp on the it. the OG-er, which, you know. The og yeah. 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 So that's sort of two of the cuts demystified. Like, the Ghost OG is the og We know it, mm-hmm. you know. Now we'll keep continuing to unravel, I think. Yeah, because I, now, did you, you ever get in touch with uh, the Tahoe sort of thing? Or no? Yeah, uh, he was he was as he said living the life, not telling the stories at the time. <laughs> right. So it's that time of year for a lot of people. Sure. Gotcha. Uh, or the first one, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna get in touch. Yeah, and he's gonna get on. Cool. No, because it's uh, like I said, it's definitely good to know when. I mean, because at the end of the day, we we all know that a lot of the OGs are just name name drops on everything you know and well it, some of them are like uh, then, s1s and some of them yeah. are name flips and that's no one knows that right right like, that's what we're trying to figure out exactly exactly and yeah. and you know and if anybody does know they can fill us in too yeah and you get to be on be on the adam dunn show <laughs> ryan yes we just gotta we just give we gotta give a shout out to marky b because he just texted me because he thought that the file that we were looking for was was like something because me and him have been working a lot on the east door so he was like hey man like is it a file that i have so he's been he's been attentive is it on is it on the, is, is so. the east door well, East door will be well, the East store was going to be open today yeah. is when we were going to do it, but right. CC just wants to make sure that it looks absolutely perfect. So I think she's now shooting for Monday again as her new extended date. <laughs> okay. Is there like some sort of promo code for our listeners? You well, yeah, guys we're going to have we're yeah, going to start nice. with like the Adam Dunn Show promo code. So we'll have it'll just be capital A D S, uh, and then and we, this is for the new uh, online hood lab <laughs> store. So. Hood What's lab the store? web address for that? I um, so I yet. believe it's going to be shop dot hoodlabstore.com is what the nice is what the, the nice be. and then we haven't completely made the code yet so we you know we can make it up here you know we, whatever you guys want it to be it's pretty easy to input but it's, it's I, I always like when it's yeah, just Adam just Dunn do, you know Adam Dunn is a little uh, specific because we have Adam Dunn show shirts there too so then we so right. it has to be Ooh. ADS we were just going to do ADS 420 ADS, ADS 420 is my other favorite store code Bam, Wouldn't done. it be TADS though? Tads? No because our <laughs> website Tads. is Adam Dunn I like, Tads. I like Tads. Tads so that's it it's Tads, 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 all caps, caps, tads, tads, four twenty. I like tads. That's gonna be the uh, the the product code. And again, big shout out to Marky B. He did all of the the graphic stuff on there. It looks really awesome. good. Awesome, thank you, Marky B. And also big shout out to Dampier, who's one of our big listeners now. Talk oh, nice. Him. Yeah, he's been been lit. He's very impressed. And he says very he's gonna help impressed. us out with our intro and stuff too. So. Cool, sweet. Yeah. Uh, do I get a face? Am I gonna get a face? A, yeah, a character? Yeah, yeah, we can Is it time? You. I know yeah. I said yeah. after a year, but I yeah. want one. Yeah, yeah, Ryan, don't even ask. <laughs> you're not. A, you're way too. You're yeah, not yeah. even in the line. But yeah. Crunchy will get New a face animation. before you get a face. Yeah, Crunchy will get a face before you say. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So other co- so that was like the, the cool stuff on the OG side of last week. But I think was m- what became quickly the most interesting part about last week was Dave's 
you know, revelation of really the the More. true OGs in a way of this game in America. Yeah, you know, in modern times, the hash plant and the strains that may have contributed to this whole thing in the long run because that's it all had to come from somewhere too. You know, and if there was all coming down, if it was coming from Florida and it was that type of it was that kryptonite or you know, and then we all basically everybody can confirm that there was you know definitely some chronic like that and some indicas and hash plant would be definitely a good choice for uh, some serious you know it was one of those old school it's an old school afghani it's just made the, the it's original across, it's, it's quite the origin of a lot of things right um but the cool cool takeaway off that though was that so rye pritchard who i think is listening uh from the cannabis and cannabis encyclopedia more importantly um he did some research on his end, and he talked with Tierra Rojo, who in turn linked him up with like his old timer network. Mm-hmm. And he said totally independently before the show was on, sort of that morning, he was calling around to find maybe some background on what we, I was asking him about OG. And he independently talked to I, I don't even know how many names I can say here, but he independently talked to their big source, mm-hmm. uh, who said that this guy, Uncle Dick, was the source. He didn't say it in terms of the OG at any point, but he said, oh, Uncle Dick, he's the guy who had the dog bud. Right, and then... That's a big one, right? Yeah, like Because yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. Cam hit me up and was like, that's Chem Dog, for everyone who's listening, the Chem Dog, the guy who made the Chem Dog. He found his seeds that made Chem Dog in some bud called Dog Bud. Right. And our buddy, P-Bud, right. had bought, the, you know, had the Dog Bud, but he didn't even know where it came from. So to have someone from the back end now confirm that mm-hmm. is pretty intense as well. And that Uncle Dick character was uh, obviously mentioned by Dave in last week's show. There's some question, actually, as to which one of these guys he is. Uh, the other cool thing is, I don't even know if I told you this, that Frank Gigax, dude, yeah. he didn't seem to be the master <laughs> grower. I love that name. Geek but, dude, amazing. how badass he is. He, I don't know that he was the master grower, but in like 1974, bro, he crashed a single person plane in the Mojave Desert. Mm-hmm. It had 1,300 or 1,400 pounds of herb on it. And he ran 20 miles on foot before they caught him after crashing a plane, foot, dude. After crashing like a single, like single engine Cessna. Yes, yeah. sir. Down. It's, it's pretty G stuff. That's the real deal, man. Like, that's. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's like Grand Theft Auto gets. for real. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's better than my I am at Grand Theft Auto. We should we should make a, like a movie around Smuggle, that. Smuggle, I smuggler know, game. I make a smuggler Well, game. and that's all the smugglers are... Uh, honestly, I think we want to do a smugglers episode. I feel like smuggler stories should be a thing we do because these yeah, guys yeah. are like yeah, no, legendary, heroic efforts to get mm-hmm. cannabis. I mean, they were getting paid too, but to get cannabis to the world. Yeah, and it was... Uh, I mean, imagine... Definitely, we know the the steps that were taken, which it's kind of funny because there was time periods where it was just like throw it in a bag and throw it on a plane, and then no one checked anything, and they just rolled in, rolled out. But you know, compared to now, everything is you know ridiculous. But at the same time, uh, people were doing crazy numbers of stuff, and just get, nobody thought small back then. That's the one. That's thing. you know, there's that quote. Some people attribute it to Tom Forsade from High Times. Some people attribute it to Howard Marks. That uh, some people, some people are the sort of pot dealers. Uh, two kinds of pot dealers: the people who have forklifts and the ones that don't. The people who right. need forklifts and the ones that don't. Yeah, like right. That's, right. Yeah, you know exactly. There, there was definitely a, a industry almost, you know, based on that, and, and a lot of money getting, you know, in Florida and those kind of built, you know, built those places. So. Yeah, built their economies and. Dude, I have a question, and this ties into all this, and, and hopefully Dave can give us some, because I re-listened to last yeah, week's Dave, show. Yeah, Dave, feel free to call in and uh, get lined up so you can answer a few questions. Here yeah, we certainly have around. tons. We- <laughs> um, but, so he, you know, other than the genetics from that crew that mm-hmm. he had, he said he got NorCal genetics, right? Right. So obviously Mendo, that's a, a lot of different Mendo, Mendo stuff, right. Yeah. So when did that scene start? Well, I mean, it was... The, I have people that have been growing in, not in Mendo, but in uh, Big Sur and late 70s. And, you know, so I'm sure there's been plenty but of is people. The, like, because Big Sur is still a little south of that. Yeah, that's right? central. That's more central Cal. Yeah, yeah. but the, like, but I'm when did Mendo, Trinity, that, like, that whole Emerald Triangle thing, when did that happen? I mean, I would, it definitely seems like it's been the prime spot for a long time. And I'm sure people have been. Because there are people up there who are like third generation growers, right? A lot of people are like third generation grower, third generation. Mm-hmm. So what is that? Tw- Sixty years? Like, can it be? Can it have been going on since the '60s up there? 
70s? Yeah, 70s for sure. 70s, 70s for sure. sure. Early yeah, 70s? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, uh, yeah, early, mid. I mean, because there's definitely, I've seen red books. And big around beautiful old old world sativas and stuff. And a lot of Mexican, Mexican pack. And then people were mixing in some Afghani and packies and starting to, you know, get it to the point where you could start thinking even about inside. And I mean, when we start talking about this stuff, that's really seeing how this, how, I still believe it was probably a very small number that was doing high level breeding like that you know even today oh, yeah. when we always, have an industry always there, is you know there aren't that many people who are really truly breeding um so and i up there and up there is that i mean when you when you breed outdoors it's definitely i mean it's very see you know it's season after season and you really have to it takes you five years to you know get us something semi-stable and, and that's you know you can't right, you're you running can, one cycle a year back then right? yeah yeah for sure i mean maybe you could, a few people might have figured out Light depth. Light depth, but I don't think that would. But that that seems a little bit more advanced. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. And if uh, anyone knows when light depth came into the game, that's actually a really good question too. I, but I feel like that is definitely a more modern uh, sort of technique. And then you had a bunch of connections on your end from last week on the Amsterdam side, right? Wasn't that all put together? Because we didn't get into it in the show, but Dave talked about. Well, this other about, guy, the guy who, the, the one who got away, who went to Amsterdam. Oh, right, right. No, exactly. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that's the funny thing about Amsterdam is everybody would come there thinking it's a, a great place to hide out. But I was like, man, you know, it's like only a million people in this town and it, everyone knows each other. And you, after a week, you're like, see the same people five times. You know what I mean? So not the greatest place to hang out, but plenty of people did. So it was kind of funny. I always had the create, you know, you could tell too, because people were just throwing money around and trying to, you know, like new face in town throwing a lot of money around. Yeah, that, was always, that was always a good that was always a good you're like, hmm, <laughs> what's going on here? You know. So um yeah, Dave, I don't know where where's Dave, man? Dave. Dave's not here actually at the moment. Where is Dave's he? not he's on, he's on the chat. He's on yeah, the chat. I was on the chat, but he's not on the phone. So uh, so yeah, Dave, please call in. Give uh, us a call in because we got you scheduled up for in about fifteen minutes, but you can come in earlier. Any time within the next fifteen minutes would be a great time to call, Dave. There you go. Perfect. Cool. So, so, and uh now but you know the the definitely uh time frame wise, uh you know, OG was developed while I was in Holland and before I left in eighty nine I'd I had personally not seen, you know, exactly that. I've seen a lot of... So we have Dave on the line, I think, yeah? We have oh. Dave here, man. Hey, hey, what's going on, Dave? <laughs> How you doing? What's happening, fellas? Dude, I got to tell you, the response to uh, to your your episode last week was by far the biggest response we've ever gotten to a show. So we're very pleased to have you back on, man. Thank you for last week, and thank you in advance for another amazing show here. Nice. Yeah, man, the truth can have amazing effects on people. That's exactly what we're after, bro. That's exactly what we're after. So we were we were kind of I'm sure you were listening a minute ago. We were you know kind of trying to gauge yeah. time frame because the thing is for us you know like I, I'm I'm just a bit too young to know the real true you know time frames of some things because I was also living in Holland for my most of my adult life. But but as a you know and as a kid I obviously wasn't participating. But those ten years before, like when like say. Uh, uh, early 70s, you know, 72 to 76 or something like that. What do you think the growth scene was like in Mendo at that point? Because you, you, you had a lot of connections up there. Yeah, when did that scene get going, and what's the history of that that whole area? Now, now I, I know my information is, is uh, kind of old, but, but uh, actually I'm turning 42. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I, mean I, I know I'm older than you so. personally, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah, at the same time, at the same time, you have some old, maybe some old timer friend up there that might have, might enlighten you a little bit at that point. Because, like I said, I, I didn't get to hang out in Mendo very much. Yeah, the the words I get, you know, I've been in Southern California my entire life. I was born in Torrance, and uh, been up here in the high desert since '72. Uh, but as far as uh, my understandings are, you know, the, the early Afghans, the early Thais, uh, you know, the stories are all accurate as far as those things go. It's funny. The the seemingly unimportant things are the most accurate. And then uh, the more valuable a thing becomes, the more twisted it gets. Well, of and course. Yeah, because yeah, people, people want to protect it. Yeah, yeah. want to protect it or something. You know, that's, that's normal. So, so without question, you know, the whole Northern California, Humboldt, uh, Garberville, Mendocino, uh, you know, Oregon, you know, be it, uh, you know, 
all all there, man. This, these are all the original hot spots. So original, I'm trying today. to wrap it in into the context of the history we know, or that I know, yeah. right, or that I think I know. I guess is what it always is in this game, right? And like from the bits that I've heard from old school heads. Like a lot of the genetics that came in, especially from Asia, so I guess the sativas, you know, were coming into Cali from the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. Right, a lot of Thai. Thai, right? The, creep, they, the creeper Thai, the chocolate Thai, um, just all a lot of different kinds of Thai for sure. And like, so was it like the people who grew up in that scene that went up? When like when did people start growing pot up in the Emerald Triangle? Obviously, that that had a finite beginning. Yeah, see, th- those would be better things uh, for people of Northern California. You know, they're they're going to be able to tell you like the back of their hand. Right. Uh, me, I can totally talk about Southern California all day long. So then, talk about the SoCal scene because to me, that's yeah. I think from what I know of the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, like that was more Southern California, right? Uh, you know, I'm not familiar with the Brotherhood of uh, Eternal Love. Uh, I do know David. I've met him, uh, and you know, heard stories that way also through Rob Clark. Um, but I'm, I'm not familiar with Brotherhood of the Eternal Love or Brotherhood of Eternal Man. So uh, I, mean, I know the stories, but right, no you, more than. But than you don't know firsthand, for sure. For sure. So it's to, like recount the beginnings of the scene as you know them. I mean, how much? Yes. How much did that all tie in with the crew you were describing with the underground bunkers, which we're calling yeah. the underground bunker crew <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah, underground bunker crew. You know, they're going to have to step up. Um, you know, my beginnings in 1990 with their bust. I mean, my original beginnings with cannabis started 13 years old and buying uh, Rob Clark's book from Jack Hare's book stand on Venice Beach. Um, you know, just getting into herb. I didn't even smoke it at that point. Uh, the first herb I ever smoked here uh, was the uh, skunk balls, uh, which turned out to be the uh, 1984 cross of the original skunk one uh, Pre-Afghan. That's when the uh, Afghan got crossed with the uh, skunk, and that made the skunk balls, which is what we're most familiar with. And that didn't actually—I I didn't smoke that until December of '86, uh, and uh, really became a staple here. Uh, you know, maybe '87 is what people refer to. Uh, How would you describe did, that, Bud? Is, I mean, like, was it? Well, that's it. I, I actually talked it over with Rob. You know, and uh, he actually busted out some of it, had the whole story behind it. And uh, it, it, it was great uh, smoking the, the first herb I ever smoked. And that's just that roadkill skunk, lime, fluorescent green. All the nugs are about the size of a golf ball, um, except for the scrub, of course. But the average nug size was a golf ball, um, you know, covered in sugar, just really nice. It's that roadkill, smell it. Stick it to the wall, whatever you want. Is that? I mean, and, that's uh, that's on that my list. Grown out and feeling. It's always it's always like when to me that always reminds me of like when I'm at like a, a festival or something and I smell like just that that perfect sharp skunkiness that you just yeah. kind of like catch a whiff and you're like, where is that? You know where what I mean? You, that? Do you, do a, you do a quick head spin. You know what I mean? And you're like, I think Damn. it's one of the classics that everyone. Yeah, some people are cringing and you're inhaling deeper. Yeah. So what's the what's yeah. the cross? What uh, what is the genetic cross that led led to that? The skunk balls, as you call. I never heard it called that, but that's awesome. Yeah, from from what I understood, the skunk originally was a uh, three way sativa, uh, Colombian gold, Oaxacan gold, and uh, oh, what was the third one? Mexican sativa or something like that, or is it a tie? I, I thought the Mexican sativa was the Oaxacan. The Oaxacan, okay, yeah, 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 it could have been a tie. Yeah, it's definitely a three-way it sativa. Was the gold. And, they, and then they put the Afghan, they dropped the Afghan on it. And, yeah, yeah I, I, I understood it, that they dropped the Afghan on it in 84, uh, tested the seeds And that was the, Poly- the Pollyanna, I think it was called? Uh, I didn't hear that name, but... I think that was one of the ones... So, used. now what you're referring to is the one with the Afghan cross, or you're talking pre that cross is the skunk you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, no, 84, I, I understood it from Rob, that the uh, cross was made with the Afghan. They did their selections in 85, and the first uh, selected females that w- were, were grown for market were marketed in 86, and that's why I got what I got. Right. And that was grown right out here in the high desert uh, in Phelan, uh, at the base of the uh, Angeles Crest Mountains there, Mountain High. Uh, by Jack Hare actually had a house up there in uh, Wrightwood. So was there like uh, a little I, cluster of growing activity in the high desert up there? 
I'm sorry? Was there like a, you know, a, was it an area like Humboldt where there was like a concentration of growing activity at the time? No, no. no. In fact, people come to the desert uh, just for, you know, the middle of the desert. <laughs> <laughs> Not much going on out here. Right. Um, you know, privacy. Right on. So, I'm sorry, please continue. So, you're talking about like 1986, uh, yeah. this this ladder skunk is, now it's being grown out there? On, yeah, on, it, I imagine a huge scale? Yeah, I, you know, again, this is coming from Rob explaining to me, you know, him and I sharing stories about the basically the first herb I ever smoked, you know, and uh, skunk is still top of the charts for me. Um, I think a lot of people get a bad concept of skunk because they've never had a real one. And are those genetics uh, still around, to your knowledge? Uh, yeah, well, yes, abs- well, not necessarily that one, but that family, for sure. Really? Tell us more about that, because I, yeah, I think there's a lot of people looking for them. What's, what's, what's also interesting about that is uh, when I got back from Amsterdam, I, I again met up with Rob uh, right before Christmas of uh, 96, and uh, he had actually uh, shared a few cuts with me. Uh, one was uh, the original skunk, which was supposed to have the Afghan in it, um, another one was from Chile. I don't Just know a Chilean land race? You remember the Chile, Adam? Mm, uh, Chile, like a Chile, uh, you mean like... It's from Chile? I don't like know. Chilean? No, not really. I don't. a super earthy flavor. Hmm. No, anyway, I, um, I did make crosses uh, with those, actually. It's kind of a funny story. Um, while the feds were, were watching me, um, I made a last batch of crosses and then just took down all the plants. But uh, I do have that skunk crossed with my hash plant. So I, I, I have good anticipation with those seeds. To that's find that, uh, that roadkill. very exciting to me. Um, I think it's very, I don't sound very excited, but because, oh, uh, <laughs> very exciting I to me. So you know, and I think I expressed that to Rob. Um, also, you know, another, another real popular one that, that got mixed up in the early eighties there was the, uh, California orange bud. Oh yeah. Well, well, let's do, let's tell everyone we're talking to again, remind them we're talking to Dave Mann, uh, a dude who we had on last week telling us about the history of, in case you're just tuning in, he told us about the history of OG Kush and sort of like where the real deal was happening in the early eighties, late seventies in the U S. Um, and he has a quite an inside track, and Adam's own uh, past intertwines and verifies there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. And also, uh, we're we're kind of we're talking about strains now that actually were on their own legends, basically like the Cali Orange. Yeah, we're knocking a few more off the list. So Cali Orange, bud, right? Orange. Like that huge in Holland. It was had a, it had a huge. Uh, is that the Cali O? Is that what we're they talking about? They had it at one point, but then they lost so it. So the Cali O is what Orange a lot bud, of people have now Northern credited. Northern Five Skunk One. Northern Lights 5 Skunk 1. That's what a lot of people have credited with being in the Jilly Bean. Mm-hmm. And the, the bubblegum. The tange. Not <laughs> in right. the tangy, though. We know that. But, yeah, like all the tangerine strains that are hot, and there was a lot of controversy about this Calio cut that went around that everyone had. So you can give us the history of this. I would love to hear. Absolutely. Uh, the cross happened in 1980, and, uh, you know, the northern guys came down. And, and uh, you know, I've had this conversation with Rob, so he can he can answer so much. <laughs> Does he listen to the show, Adam? Uh, I mean, he, we had him on the show before. Does he so. listen is what I'm no, asking. No, he's too busy. He's fishing all the time. He's too busy. He's busy fishing? Yeah, he loves fishing. You can listen to the show on a podcast while <laughs> you're fishing, well, but maybe, he can't call in is the thing. Yeah. We Captain can get him a call. Rob. I can get him in on one. Let's get him in, yes. Rob Clark yes. is who we're talking he's about. Man. Rob Clark is... Everybody needs to read his books a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely well, one the of best my part about, The best part about Rob is that he wrote that as his master thesis for his college and just, like, it's still selling to this day as a book. Killed you know, it. The, the marijuana botany. Yeah. So it's an yeah. awesome read. Every breeder I know so got, got their start started. by reading that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what everyone's like. Be- I read yeah. that, and then I was like, oh, I want to read. Yeah, Yeah, no, and that's the thing. Is he it was no color photos. They were all drawings, but they were definitely good drawings because they indica- you know, kind of gave you a really good indication of what you're looking for. Without yeah. even having to take photos, and it was all raw. You know, it was all basically land. Somehow, races. it's always better than photos too, because it's more general. Like a photo, it looks different on a different plant, but from the diagrams, you're like, oh, that's totally this thing. Right. Yeah. No, it was awesome. That's right. And evolution and ethnobotany. That's just a serious book for serious people. Yeah, I. Uh, that's one I got to really get. You know what? I kind of want to talk with Rob. I want to read that, and then uh, 
I want to talk sure. with him about it because I'm anthropology guy. That's that's definitely yeah. like right him to come and Dave really. have so much history, and, and it's just I, you know people want to know who I want to hear. I want to hear their stories. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, hit, I've hit Dave up. He's yeah. he's. I think he might be listening because he. I've definitely really? told him to listen. So and that's <laughs> Dave Watts. <clears throat> yeah, no, I've told him he has to listen. He has and to. And he has to get on it. If you're point. listening, Dave, this is but Mitch yes. paying his respects. Adam's probably just going to say what's up because he's cocky like that. I know he's on the couch. Doing a doing a bong here right yeah. now, so nice. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's doing dabs nice. though. I don't think I think he's he's just doing some beautiful full melt dry sieve. Yeah, that's, that's all for about sure. the THC. For sure, get rid of that pesky plant. Right, get rid of that. So, <laughs> so uh, but, uh, so tell us, yeah, Dave. The, the, let's bring it back. Bud, tell us about Northern Cali Orange Bud. Five Skunk One. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Tell us about Cali Orange Bud, please. Yeah, man. They made the cross. Uh, you know, northern guys went their way. Southern guys stayed their side. And uh, these, this cross made just a, a plethora of diversity. And uh, one of those things was the orange bud. Um, when I met up with Rob, I, in fact, I know the, I know the OB guys. Uh, you know the northern guys or the southern guys? The 80s, uh, early 80s, like 81, 82. And, uh, you know, amazing that, that not more of them uh, didn't get in trouble. Uh, but, the, again, really tight crew, very professional. And, uh, man, they had the OB. So that was very productive. And a lot of people in California, for sure Southern California, got that orange bud and they loved it. And, and, and it can't be mistaken with that, that just that, that Amsterdam orange bud that's just uh, that orange, orange. Uh, that would be a mistake. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of like an orange soda that has so much orange that it turns skunky. And so the OB had a huge skunky exhale um, that, that most people really loved. The inhale was uh, was good, but the exhale just, man, was phenomenal. And so it was a great seller. Adam, do when you know anything about the, that uh, that Amsterdam orange? I mean, uh, yes. they. I think I mean because I know that when the you know the all the Americans that were there. Because that's the thing is in Holland, it's always been Americans that were doing the big things right. because they're the ones who were excited about being there, you know. Because so. I think it's that sweeter one that got into uh, the jelly yeah, the hairy. and the tan. It's more sure. hairy. Or, it's maybe more hairy for sure. I mean, I haven't seen what, I mean, it's like I was there and that was basically like one of the queen bees of all the plants as far as production went. Like people were doing greenhouses sure. full of it. And it was kind of yeah. like the... It was almost like the blue dream of, of then, you know what I mean? As far as it was easy to grow, grew big... Much Ch- denser, though. It, it, it had, stronger. it had, uh, you know, it was like one of those, like, w- that's it. We're only growing that, you know what I right. mean? Right. And so they were starting. Everyone it. loved it. Pleasant flavor. Yeah, know, and it yeah. was kind of the flavor of then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Correct. But let's take, uh, guys, let's take uh, just a through. second to acknowledge Incredibles. Oh yeah, one second there, Dave. Uh, Incredibles, the number one edibles in the universe, uh, especially here in the Denver universe. Did we find out more about any potential new flavors? I haven't heard about new flavors yet. I have to go down. A, I'm going to go buy the rumor, right? Which one for the Halloween flavor? No, that was the, <laughs> that was Crunchy's presentation. Was I know, but, but what, yeah, what'd you hear? What'd you hear? Why is everybody hold on? How come I want to address this right now? How come every time we don't have something where like something isn't right? Because you're leaning. It's like, Ryan, what's going on? Because Mitch and Adam are like leaning up on the mics. <laughs> Ryan's kicked back in the chair, just listening, just listening. You could just listen. Yeah. It, I, I'm in the green room. Actually, you can't listen uh, to the green room. No, you can't. Incredibles, though. No, like I said, they had f- they had 16 flavors. They probably have 17 now. Right. So and like, if you bars, guys, yeah, so Makiba mm. bars, excellent choice. I still haven't had it yet. Have you guys tried it? I no. hear it's really no. good. Let's go. The Makiba let's go bar. Get the yeah, samples. you can get the Makiba bar, like the nuts and oats bar. Yeah, totally. it's like a granola bar. Yeah. It's awesome though, but it has some CBD in it. It's like a healthier thing. Also, uh, let's shout out Boulder Wellness real quick. Boulder Wellness, 5420, Arapaho in Boulder, uh, organically grown cannabis. Yeah, hand-raised. Oh, no, yeah. not hand-raised. Well, yeah. Oh, hand-raised yeah, hand-raised they're hand-raised. hand-watered and everything. I mean, these, those guys take their time. It's, it's organic. Yeah. I mean, come on. You right. know, like power right. feed them. You don't know. I was trying to think if we had a dripper line or not. No. But no, no, no. Hand-fed. Hand-fed, yeah. The the big, and the cleanest, because the garden's so clean. You're like, you can't do organics with a watering can and keep it that clean, but you can. Yeah, well, they don't use watering cans. They're beyond that, I think. Right. They're actually right. actually using hoses. <laughs> uh, but but uh, awesome, like yeah. I said, awesome grown. Um, they got some of our genetics in there. 
Oh, yeah. Some of the best concentrates over there, and, too. And the concentrate game over there is flying off the shelf, for Did sure. Did they so. uh, pick the winner of their contest, Ryan? No, they're still doing a bunch. Like, the other day, I went in and actually got some, like, Nug Run Sage, and it was proper. But nice. I, I think it was CO concentrates that did that. So they're still getting them in from a bunch of different places. Nice. I don't know if they've picked something specific yet. But definitely great starting material. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Um, so let's bring it back to Dave. Yeah. So Dave. Right on. Right on. Yeah, very good. So the so, orange bud, you're saying that like a different sort of sweeter, less skunky version went to Amsterdam, but a skunky citrusy one remained uh, out there in California. Do you know of any anything that came of that? You know what I mean? Strains that were made from that? Well, I mean, not, not by myself. Uh, he, that was a highly guarded cut. And, uh, in fact, when I spoke with Rob in 96 about it, uh, he had thought it was lost. And uh, I told him I had it. He said, no, you don't. <laughs> and so I just kept my mouth shut. Well, when he came back in uh, uh, 96 for Christmas, uh, I had actually taken uh, him an ounce of that and uh, rolled up a joint, passed it to him, had him light it up. And his first words were, how did you get this? <laughs> so how did you get it? Yeah, well, from the Orange Bud guys. Okay, um, they had been they had been growing it since 1981, and uh, just kept the cut solid and 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 uh, secure, and just worked a tight group, and uh, had a long prosperous career. Uh, most of those guys retired without any uh, problems. In fact, the cut is gone. So before anybody asks, um, it is now gone. Yeah, it's it is gone. Is gone unless somebody has something of it. Uh, the original guys. I, I remember the, the Orange Bud in Amsterdam also got uh, nixed at one point, and it was like my friends were manicuring at the spot where they had the cuts, and they were manicuring and making cuts kind of in the same building. And the, they went out for cig- they went out for like a break to have a cigarette or get some food. Came back, place was being raided. They watched wow. they watched the last bits go out. Uh, my one friend, you know, thought she had it, and then she, like, didn't like it, but, like, they had taken the wrong cut, you know what I mean? So it was, like, classic. Where it was, like, they grew it out, and it was, like, no, that's not it. So, yeah. lost. And I think that's what Rob was referring to. Yeah, uh, that for they sure. they had lost it. Yeah, so, no, it was definitely yeah. lost alone, and, and it was, like, there was a day that it was lost, like, boom. So, crazy that's, stuff. That's, that's pretty it. awful. Yeah, it is. And, it's terrible whenever you, uh, if you, it, sometimes it's by your, by your own mistake, and sometimes it's, you know, by the act of you know, God or police or whatever, but when you lose, ordinary circumstance. when you lose a strain, it, it's definitely a painful situation because you're like, you realize, you know, A, you've got to go with, think back to all the people that you could have given it to. Yeah, and at first you feel like a jerk for hoarding that strain. You're like, ah, I could have gave it to that person. But I've had it too, like with bubblegum, it was the same thing. Like the one that I saved, I got to keep that for a good, I don't know, solid maybe eight years or something like that. And then it came down to one plant and then it was a classic where I was moving and it was at somebody else's place and it didn't get watered for a few days and it was outside and it just like crisped out <laughs> and I came over there like, no. And that's what happened to that bubble gum, yeah? Yeah, and that's the, so that's how, you know, and I, that was about around 99 or something like that. So I was like, no. And so that was, you know, and that happens. And that's just one of those things you got to, you got to spread them around a little bit, and but not too much. And you got to find people that aren't going to just dump it on the world for, for and give it to everybody because right. you don't need that. You don't yeah. need to hoard it, but you also don't need to. <laughs> completely There's like, a delicate balance, as with exactly, most things. Exactly. And and that was the epiphany with uh, with these genetics was that uh, they came too close to actually get being lost, and it was like get these out to everybody, stat. You know, let's just make sure that this never can happen. You know, these, these things, too much work has gone into these things. And uh, before, even before, these things were already great to, to begin with, which is why, you know, you preserve them. Um, but, yeah, so the OB, you know, thing, that, that was just a solid staple in Southern California for sure, uh, along with the skunks, um, the ties, of course, uh, the, the high-grade uh, imports from Mexico, the seedless Hawkins. So Adam um, has a guy. Acapulco let me ask gold. you, Dave. Let me ask you about this. Adam has a, a connection to a guy who may be listening. Who uh, you said his dad was the guy who started people growing seedless herb in Mexico, right? 
Yeah, I doubt. I don't know if Mr. Wheeler's son is listening, but if he is, um, I'll definitely get him on the air at one point. Um, yeah, David Wheeler was sort of a, a character that I met in Amsterdam uh, about, also probably around 98, I guess it was, 97. And he uh, he was really into vaporizers at that point. He was trying to develop his own vaporizer. And he came out with one called the Volatilizer, which I guess is credited as the first like on, is that that off. weird bong one that they have in Amsterdam, which I think is very cool? It looks like a, a Buck Rogers uh, apparatus. Oh, oh, I know that one. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. it's got like little r- yeah, rings, yeah. like cooling rings, and it's basically a cigarette lighter with cooling rings and a flash button and the right size bowl. Right. So they definitely did their homework a little bit to get it to work, and it definitely was the first one that kind of delivered every time the same to sort of taste. Whereas the, they already had people had already been doing heat guns for a while. That was right. That was well known, you know. But yeah, this is more. Bill. Yeah, well, Eagle Bill. It's funny. Well, Eagle Bill learned from the guy, and then a guy named Jeff out there who was, I would yeah. credit to the first vaporizer guy that I met, and that was in '93, I guess, something like that, you know. And he had, he said they've been already doing it for five, you know, five to ten years probably. Well, yeah, heat guns. People just have heat guns. I'm sure people try right. that. Yeah. yeah, and figured out that you don't have to burn it and all that, you know. So. Right. But. Um, in general, he was li- he was in Mexico. Um, like late, like like mid '60s, and even even earlier, but he was like down beatnik era. Yeah, that's what and, I'm picturing. Like when Burroughs would, is writing letters about going to Mexico, to and he would pop. just say, he "Told me that he'd you know ride donkeys down through town and pick out what he would do is they would, they'd sell it in piles. So he'd pretty much go in and look through the piles and he'd cherry pick out these seedless ones, you know. And then so his his uh, thing is that he realize that the sterile plants weren't making seeds. Right, because like one out of every, whatever, 10,000 plants is sure. sterile, right? So they're just Female. like, you know, naturally yeah. occurring sensimilia, which, you know, then apparently, according to him, he put it together, you know. That, but he realized, so, but the, what he's saying is that he realized that, hey, these ones that are bigger, yeah. these don't have any seeds in them. Yeah, and they're so beautiful. So he put it put together backwards like that. He yeah. wasn't like, oh, if I don't put seeds in them, they're going to get bigger. Exactly. He just kind of noticed that there was this recurring pattern where he'd find these plants that were seedless. Awesome, so, beautiful plants. And, and, he, were all and he'd always grab those, yeah. you know. So, and, and then he apparently, t- you know, put it together and told the people to start separating the males and females down there and got his own uh, first kind of sensi on market, like, and he was talking uh, 60s, 62, you know what I mean? 63, like way before. And then like figuring it out. And then getting it actually onto market like around the mid, you know, late sixties. I wonder how long he had a monopoly on that. That he said for years. And then the thing is, apparently, there was an article in High Times about him years ago, and uh, there was a, like a, a cop chasing him too the whole time. You know, there was one certain like a it, cop with a grudge type. Exactly. Deal. So <laughs> they, so those yeah. are the best stories. It's always that guy. Yeah. yeah, and so and, and his dad was uh, and Mr. Wheeler's dad was a CIA guy. So it was like it's all sort of crazy stuff because you know dad was from the CIA. He's been growing weed his whole life, right? And then you know he's, or, you know, smuggling and then smuggling. growing. CIA and smuggling kind of go hand in hand. It all goes hand in hand, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Those things usually, <laughs> somehow, they always do, right? But anyway, so yeah, that was kind of a little off off subject there, but no, but I mean, an interesting point to like when I think, let me just Ryan, I want to do a generate when you think Mexican import weed, what do you picture? Uh, like dirt, like Acapulco gold, brown dirt. Because that's all, I mean, when I, before, anything that I got when I was first started smoking, you know, I mean, I'm not that old, so it was, I mean, and and again, yeah, I'm from Philadelphia, I'm not from over here. No, no, but that's a main point, many of us. Terrible. I mean, but I, that was everything. Though, and Mexican you know? weed. I mean, I haven't seen good Mexican weed. I don't know uh, Mexican actually, no, growers. I mean, I've seen good Mexican yeah. weed. Chris oh, has, sure. yeah. I'm sure it's Mainly there. in the 80s. Stinky. Yeah. Import, though? Yes. Not in yes. Mexico. Yes. Imported here. I've seen some yeah. that were like trunks. Pillow packs. Pillow packs. They do them when they're real. First you know. kill I smoke. Pillows. Exactly. So yeah, I I, I guess yeah, growing up on the Google East Coast, Bowl. by the time it got to us, it had been oh, yeah. packed into a few cars and yeah, no, you're definitely at the end of the road there. Yeah, yeah the the Acapulco Gold for sure, it, and and Rob can verify this because I know he's got experience with it, it. Is is responsible for these citrus effects? Um, it had really? the best tangerine flavor. People swore it was packed in orange peels. Yeah. And, and shipped that way, but actually not. That's 
Really? Terps. So that's yeah. interesting. So would you say even to like the, you know, the grapefruit, the lemon, all that citrus, or just that orange? Maybe the orange one. Probably the lemon is more Thai or something influenced. Yeah. yeah. That's what I agree. I, I would agree. And then who says how that got to that, you know, to, to South America? Um, where did those generate from? Right. Well, uh, you know, it pretty much all follows trade routes anyway. Because it's all people going from spot to spot and... I'm sh- you know, like one of Rob's uh, other theories, too, is about the whole everything is an indica. There is no sativa, and it's just expressions f- from wherever they're been left at. For f- but the question is, at what Narrow point? Leaf, wide leaf. At what point has there been a genetic yeah. change in the plant? I mean, what I've seen, and, I, and the theory that I'm beginning to believe. I don't think there's a genetic it, difference. I think it's just, I mean. It's yeah, if we're getting to the to the crazy, like, super cannabis geekiness. Yeah. <laughs> built into this plant is adaptability that's its core mission it it helps your body adapt when you ingest its chemicals and it also it adapts if you put it in one environment it'll grow one way sure no i don't i don't know about within a generation but quick dude like alfie in the virgin islands has some cataract kush that he said is growing like jungle weed now i mean the uh, hawaiian mango um you know i had a i had a strain of hawaiian mango that was grown in hawaii and uh, got it from the gentleman who grew it for over a decade in mango fields, decomposing. And, uh, you know, when I tasted it, you know, I was really into the heavy duty fruity at the time. And so they really wanted me to try this, brought it back from Hawaii. And man, just mango. Well, and, and how much of that, that was, was related to just the, what it was eating? How much of it was the genetics of the butt, the, you know, well, the chemotype, well, as is, you call it? This is it. He said, I swear to you, it didn't taste like that when I started growing it. And then when you and, took uh, it out of the mango field, did it continue tasting like that? Is the absolutely. That's... And in fact, well, he didn't grow from clone. You know, he didn't. He didn't know cloning, so he just made seeds every year, and just kept going from seed, from seed, from seed. Was he still growing kept, in the mango field? And fields, it kept though? degrading, degrading, degrading. <laughs> you know, so it required going back to some of the earlier seed, and and getting a, a better representative of it. The flavor always stayed there, um, which is something I've always wanted to explore more. Um, you know, my, my career got cut short. Of course, and, uh, of so course. I didn't get to explore a lot of things that I was uh, researching. Adam, have you seen that, where, like, a strain can take on a trait, whether because it's grown in that or...? Um, well, you know, it's weird. Is like, that's how Sage kind of blew my mind, that it was... Uh, yeah, the big sir. We grew it in in Amsterdam, and then, you know, it was me and Mo, and Mo is from Big Sur. That's where he was born, you know? So he knows that environment so so well and it was just weird because when we were testing it out there was like the one we selected was the one that we were both like tripped out because it really tasted like sage and that whole area is all white sage where it, where it grows you know so, so it's so, growing in whites around white sage yeah that whole area is full, filled with white sage so it was just like kind of weird because it was like that tastes like big sir you know what i mean like weird like don't know if it was you know it was it wasn't on every single one it was definitely a select one that we picked out and we just kept calling it the sagey one you know so but I don't know. Who knows? You know, and that's it. And you know, we used to name things according to what they were. <laughs> well, there wasn't much you marketing. You say sage, it, it tastes right? like sage. Right. You say skunk, it tastes like skunk. You say blueberry, it tastes like freaking blueberries. Um, it's not like uh, you know a lot of weak blueberries these days. Yeah, that's one of those strains that didn't have a lasting power for some reason. I'm not sure what was up. It kind of watered down quick. You know, the other, you know, strawberry cough, they say, came from a strain that was strawberry fields that was grown in strawberry fields. And that's where that, and obviously that flavor is in the strawberry cough still. That's a really bizarre, I'd like to get Rob's take on this Mm -hmm. specific topic. Cannabis (laughs) absorbing it. Well, maybe it, maybe, yeah, maybe it kind of like, uh, emulates the terp profile of the plants around it or something. As like a camouflage yeah. technique or something. Maybe. That would be sick. <laughs> you know, the plant definitely absorbs whatever you put at its roots if you don't kill it. Yeah, so. but for that to go for that to go into seeds, like then it's putting it in the it's in the gene, RNA genetic, yeah, at the, least. The, yeah. It's in the code. That's crazy. You Could know, be. It's Could a be. modifier, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. and that's like what that's the ultimate adaptogen. Like it's adapting to growing not just indica or sativa, whatever, but it's adapting to growing well, whatever the in soil, strawberry fields. Yeah, whatever the soil know. content is or whatever's breaking down around there. Um, yeah, flavor was always the lead characteristic. Uh, the potency is there. I mean, that's why you started with it in the first place. But as um, you were but, saying, that that twenty plus, that yeah. was a specific evolution of this specific line, right? 
yes, hash plants bred year after year after decade after century for specific resin profile. Now, how were those brought into the country? You know, those genetics was I mean, obviously seeds, not cuttings, right? Correct, all seeds. You know, and it this like is, in, you know, nothing was intentional. Eighties, you know, um, not every like that. Was, people were just coming to terms that you could actually grow under a light bulb, right? Um, you know, and then there's funny stories as to how the people came across that. You know, if you can get sunburned under a light, then you can grow a plant under it. And uh, I've heard all kinds of things that I believe are true from their perspective, you know. And a lot of um, it's very interesting that the types of lights that people were not, you know, in a sense forced to work with, but also experiment. It was out of a need that, you know, you couldn't go to the grocery store. That was simply out of the question. That's so, it. yeah. And you like high altitude, you know, the big deal was uh, mercury vapors, you know, high UV. And, and uh, I don't know about all that. Genetics play... Uh, uh, more of a major role than environment with or food or diet but it's interesting that because we just you well know, i mean most people tried to grow like those ties and those things that were you know, unruly at best you know what i mean they were, and and then right. fully hermaphroditic and then banging into the lights and i mean you see some of the photos and you're like that is not going to yield anything yeah, that is <laughs> not good that is not good <laughs> that is not going to be good so but um, when you have that flavor mm-hmm. it's a challenge and you want to make it workable you know it's real when i was out in uh california for the cup out there, I got to stay with you know Eddie Funksta, right? You know Eddie Funksta. Um, not sure. I will introduce I'll you guys better. He's that. the man. He's one of the yeah. first dudes I met in the nice. industry. Solid bro. Um, and I don't know if he listens to the show, but if he does, definitely shouts to Eddie. He grows like an old school tie from from that era, mm-hmm. and he yeah. you know he had just trimmed it, so it was sitting on the table when I walked in. And it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like. Yeah. Guys, are you joking? Right. Like, dude, I like I've never seen what your I don't think I've ever seen your herb personally before. Is this what you're showing me? Yeah. You know, but then you look at it and like of course it's gorgeous. It's just that's how it grows. Yeah, it's more spindly. And when you smoke it, it's legit, man. Right. It's just yeah. who would grow that. Man, that flavor. Well they have and, you know that tie I was working with uh was definitely a worked tie and, and every variety uh, that I had gotten from Frank was a three-way. Uh, the HP was a three-way, uh, Lebanese, Afghan, and Nepal. So the when Afghan you say the hash plant was what put that 20-plus genetics yes. into cannabis, was it that three-way hash plant or yes. one of the predecessors of that? It, it, came, it came out of that breeding program. And, and, you know, what Rob proves in evolution and ethnobotany is that you cannot breed for potency uh, higher than genetic. Uh, what it, I mean, what it can actually genetically produce, what it's limited to. Right, you can't increase the potency through breeding if it's not in the... If you get an increase in potency, it's because you've grown it better, you've allowed it to express itself to its fullest extent, but you're never going to get more than 100% of what's available from its, from its DNA. Uh, so these, these high-potency chemotypes are preexistent. Uh, a lot of people over the last few decades have tried to take credit. Um, man, I could really pick people apart. But for making uh, you their can, you can, uh, substandard varieties potent. You can feel free like, to take whatever shots you want. One. <laughs> we definitely, you've earned, you've earned the, uh, the credibility and respect in our eyes to uh, right any, any uh, misconceptions. That there are well, if you're going to turn a 13 percenter into an 18 percenter, it's going to require a 25 percenter. And then if you go above the 18 percent, you're going to become further away from the thing you started with and more like the thing you're crossing it to. And, uh, so there's so no way to works. breed something with just the potency of another strain. You're going to take on the total characteristics as well. Is that, is that kind of what well, you're saying? Well, with large enough populations, and of course these books explain it very clear, which you know took a lot of work to comprehend. Um, I mean, when you start to understand the magnitude that, that Mr. Clark and Mr. Watson, uh, with their, the magnitude of their work that they've done to even be able to talk like this is insane. And uh, when you start talking about large populations, you're, you're able to see every expression of every combination given the time. Um, so when you're breeding, you right. understand. So it might be one that. out of 10,000. It might be one out of 100,000. Sure. It might be one out of a million. So 
and you might get that one the first time. Right, if you're lucky. And it might you might go through a million to figure out that you had it. To find, you know? yeah, right. Oh, that was not very likely, yeah. but yeah, or you yeah. grow the first time and you got it, and you just keep going looking for something else, and then you're like, wait a minute, that was that was the best it was already time. there. Yeah, yeah, that you know, happen. which is cool because you sorted it out. You yeah. know, no, hopefully um, you kept it. If no, that's did. the worst part. Is usually you haven't. Usually you've thought, oh, that was the one I started with. Yeah. So when you find something, you're like, oh well, it has what I'm looking for, but it's missing this other thing. It, don't keep breeding. Keep looking through those beans. You will find it. Um, given time and enough population, um, most people, you know, satisfied. They, they say, oh, this is close enough. Well, it's the good. problem is, is if you do lots of small runs, then every single time you kind of give yourself a chance to be farther from the farther from the source, you know, so then because yeah. you have to, you have to breed it again and again and again. And so that point, and if you, you can't really do the same, cro- you can't do the same thing over and over again, too, because you'll end up, then you will end up uh, with an IBL mm-hmm. that sometimes... Can can be beneficial in a few crosses, but not definitely not like multiples of just keep going and going. So you no, kind of have to outcross it to make it to make it. A, but then you keep then again you lose your your core your center at that point. Yeah, and 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 when you're doing it, it it's pretty self-explanatory. Like you, you know, just the power of observation. Um, nobody, you know, when you're a breeder, as long as you're not working with a group. You know what you're looking for. You know what's keying you in. And, and even if you can't explain that to somebody else, you, you have a bead on it. And uh, you just got to go for, for what you're going after and just stick to that. Well, and, I go. mean, now people have access to tests and things. So we can kind of, a lot of people will be guided by those tests. You know, they'll. That's they'll, true. That's they, a they, really they, interesting. We, so, we didn't really have those. We didn't have access to those. Some people did, maybe, but 99.9% of the people out there definitely did not have access to it. Okay. So I think that's going to be the difference between the next generation of breeders now, which are going to think that, well, obviously they can probably cut a few corners and make maybe make some things uh, speed along because for instance you can do a in that 10,000 population you could pretty much get within uh you know, once you see green leaves, you could pretty much get a profile, whether it's a CBD rich or, you know, if it has the profile right. to yeah. even produce. If you those. know what you're looking for in in that chemo type. Yeah, and then you can definitely run through those numbers really fast because you don't waste your time growing out the ones that aren't showing it in the beginning. You know, so then then you can run another ten thousand and then look for another, you know, twenty that are showing out of those ten thousand. So I can yeah, see those people, sports. Like yeah, DJ Short talks about. I can see people, uh, you know, speeding up the process a lot. But at the same time, maybe not having the same feeling going into it that we all had to do before because it was mostly a lot of testing of our own way, which is consuming cannabis and figuring it out. You know what I mean? So they yeah, take that out when people don't – some people may not even smoke. You know, they'll just be looking at the numbers and trying to bet, base everything on numbers, which isn't – there's a, definitely there's a – We're definitely not qu- quantifying everything that we qualify with. It's a guide, but it's not a rule. Yeah, no, and it's hard if you're if you're not – partaking you know what i mean it's one of those things that's kind of where i think that's where holland kind of screwed up a lot because a lot of the guys there didn't nobody smoked pure they all mixed with except for vernard which is good vernard that's one thing i appreciated with him he's actually one of the few dutch guys that uh, right. smoked pure you know but in general most people there smoke tobacco which kind of put them at a disadvantage in my opinion when it comes to like knowing what you're doing you know knowing what you're producing that's right. Because you kind of, and that's it. Uh, knowing what you're going after in the first place. When you're when you're talking about a bag seed, you're just comparing it to the bag that you got. Yeah. Um, and then and then understanding from a breeding aspect or or just from a genetic aspect that things are missing. You only got half the uh, half the chromosomes. Uh, if it was due to a you know hermaphrodite okay. right. or if you even just S one. Yeah. Um, and and you know when. When I was first getting started breeding, um, understanding these schedules I was given, they're all sex-linked schedules. Um, all these uh, markers, these breeding traits, uh, were, were all linked to specific traits. And so these, uh, these schedules were, were made to line up sex-linked traits, dominant and recessive. Um, until, I believe it was about 2003, uh, nobody even believed that the male chromosomes had anything to do with anything. Now, did and, your uh, breeding schedules take that into account, or did they? Absolutely, already did. Because when you're breeding, you know. I mean, when you're doing the work, you know that male is affecting something. 
um, even though there's not the test to prove it, you're, you're tracking it. It's working. I mean, mine was the dark yellow pollen, and uh, I still use it for the tracking of it. Um, and that, that says that's present. Now, whether it's what I want um, is another thing, but at least I can cut right to the chase and just lose all the, you know, all the ones that don't have the dark yellow pollen. Or like the uh, hash plant, I bred it uh, with the red trait, and I would track the red trait. And uh, that, that was like a marker for me uh, to see where it came through in the next round. Yeah, it's like I always tell people if they're going to do some breeding first round, it's a good idea to take things that, like, you know, take something that really is a true purple strain, take something that's, you know, true green strain. Don't try to cross two, like a a sour and a northern lights or something like that, you know, because they're they're both kind of similar color and you're not going to be able to track what's what. But when you do purple and green, even if it's not, even if just as a test run, you'll really see, like, well, okay, half have purple and half have a top green and bottom purple and the other ones are the opposite and, and they'll be very easy to track and you can make the numbers out and then you can run all the you can run all the the, the theories oh, and things true. yeah and you can game make it and it makes sense whereas if it's two things that are kind of close you're, yeah, you're you're gonna have a hard time so dave i want to i want to get to some listener questions we're gonna we got about three minutes yeah. we're gonna uh, pay some acknowledgments and we're gonna come back but uh, so the first listener question that I think I want to definitely start getting the answer to now, the most immediate uh, question after last week's show was, what will it take to get you back in the game in Colorado or Washington uh, and back in the industry? A, a, a legal environment. Um, I jumped the gun the first time. I had faith in my state. And uh, to this day, I've never broken a law in my state. Uh, except for cultivating cannabis um, under federal law. Um, I, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm steadfast, uh, a legal environment. And, and I know so you, you mean have a federal- it there in Colorado yeah. and Washington. And, and that makes me willing to talk and, con- and, and, and interact like that. But to actually get back to work, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like a burn victim. I really need uh, things to be legal. Um, so on a federal level, people that are trying to do things professionally and legally, um, and absolutely, they, you couldn't hold me back from doing it. Um, only the federal government. So that's to everyone who who has a a business offer to Dave. First, uh, throw some money towards federal legalization. Yeah, pay a, lob- pay a lobbyist first. Yeah, man, let's end the drug war. Yeah. I mean, this is why we all have had to do what we've done. Imagine how productive. We could have been had we not been going to prison. I think, I mean, you know, I think that's some of the great things when you hear about the stories. Some of, And I would love to get into more of those. Some of the stories you were telling us about Frank and his crew. Um, you know, these massive lives. underground. I mean, and, the, the you know, the story that we uncovered of, of Frank, you know, crashing the plane and running 20 miles. Like in court, court documents, you know, reported by, you know, both sides there. Like, uh, that's, you can't, can't argue with it. No, and it's fascinating stuff, and and those are the risks that were imposed because they were literally being hunted by the most powerful military in the world for what they were doing. That's what the war on drugs was, and that's crazy. Is is. You know, we, the, and, and, and the beginning of it too. So then it means it's like you know you they're putting the full resources at it, yeah, man. It's they got like everything else on their yeah. agenda at that point. Crazy stuff. It's a, every year, you know, I, I have a, a circle of friends that every year we try to figure out how we can get back to work. And for the last 18 years, all we can figure out is it's still not okay. Um, I'm not saying that, that, you know, what the people that are operating are operating illegally, uh, just not in a mode that I have faith in. Um, right, you need, you need that, that absolute they with you. They right. can just take you out and right. turn you into us at Bel Air. Um, you know, like I said, Todd's house may have been a joke, but the purpose behind it absolutely was not. Yeah, and let's get into that after the Mr. jump. Mr. McWilliams too. lost his life over it. Yes, let's get into one. all that after the jump. Here, we're gonna we're gonna pay some acknowledgments and uh, please hang with us to uh, to continue. You got it. Right on. Well, let's uh, start by giving respects again to Way to Grow. With their can of fertilizer sale going on. Dude, way to grow. Killing it on the sales, right? So first you had your fans. Then you had your lights. You're all spruced up, ready to go. 
flip to Canna. Yep. Give oh, it a shot. Exactly. And the filters were already in there, so things yeah. are rolling. And dude, Canna is a great line because you know, again, I'm biased towards organics, of course. Their bio line, a good compromise. But there if you're just going, man, if you're going to p- for production, yeah, exactly. It, it's, it it's, does the work. It's it's definitely production stuff. And um And great cocoa. And and super easy super easy to work with too. Yeah. That's one thing. And like I said, great customer support. So if you ever uh, you know, you never have to you can call direct to Canada, I'm sure still because they were a tw- not 24/7, but de- got to think check their times too cuz they're in Holland, so right. 8 hours ahead. So but probably online you can get at them. In the oh, meantime, for, get at way to grow online, way to grow.net. For sure. Right? Check out their six store locations. Go down there. They got a ton of in-store demos coming up too oh, is yeah, the also, other thing. Yep, that was also right? on the, on the so list. So go down. They always have awesome giveaways. Uh, I have a lot of check, shirts from those. Check their Facebook page too, because they'll probably give you updates on the day. On, True on the that, episode. and that's way to grow. Uh, and also shout outs to Incredibles. Incredibles, best edibles in the universe, and uh, here in Colorado, of course, and they have 15, 16 different Let's talk blades. about what we mean when we say the best again. It's okay. not just that they're the strongest, because they are. They have a all range, you know, they're 300. Right, right, right. They, but it's, yeah, and that's, the, that's kind of one of the best parts, is that they, yeah, they have something for everyone. Yep. They go to the strongest that you need. Chicken's back. The chicken is back at Dave's place. <laughs> Chicken's in the you desert. Inside that chicken. <laughs> um, rooster. And they taste amazing. They're mm. like there are a lot of really great tasting edibles on the market too that don't get the job done consistently. But that's what Incredibles is about. Check and them out. It's Incredibles great. Colorado. Yep. I believe dot com. And they're everywhere. And if they're not in your local dispensary, and you better tell them to get them in there. And of course, shout out to Build a Soil. Yes, Build a Soil. Awesome uh, information. They got all of our specials still up, I believe. And um, they're, they're definitely if you're if you're into organics, which we of course are, and uh, their integrated pest management program that we were working with was aw- is awesome. And they still have all those. I think you can still get those specials too. Right? Yeah, yeah, I I believe I just talked to Jeremy. So you just have to go to buildasoil.com and then. On the like navigation bar on the right, you go to blog, and I believe it's the most recent two posts. Uh, each one of them has a different. It's one's the integrated pest management, and the other one is the fertilizer one. Yeah, the other yeah. one's the do-it-yourself fertilizers. Right, nice for the TLO. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's uh, more coming from Build the Soil, and more to that organics thing. Microbe Man did reach out to me. And he said, you know, integrated pest management's a lot more than the stuff you're talking about in an organic sense. And he's absolutely right. And I want to uh, expand that. That'll, uh, be so, that'll be good. Yeah. So, Dave, let's bring it back, man. We got about, you know, 25 minutes and then we're going to start wrapping up and collecting our thoughts. And cool. And if Rai's yeah. Rai listening, he can also pipe yeah, in. Yeah, Rai, please pipe in if you're uh, feeling well enough to, to give a call. Um, yeah. But, Dave... Uh, so what Rye did piece together and Rye Pritchard is who I'm talking about you guys can check him out on Facebook really awesome dude uh, cannabis journalist historian uh, out here in Colorado um, and so he on his own end found out a connection with Uncle Dick that Uncle Dick was the holder of the dog bud which gave a great deal of credence to your tale my friend so uh, Tell us more about these characters, how they all fit together. Who are these these uh, interesting folks who were going up against the most powerful army in the world to advance and propagate cannabis? That's right. Well, well, the Uncle Dick I'm referring to is uh, Dick Cohen. And, uh, no, he's a different Dick. Uh, Adam, you're familiar with Dick. Yeah. No, he's had a normal. He was had a normal for for yeah. a long time. Okay. That, that's Uncle Dick that I'm referring to. So if that's the guy, then that's the guy. But uh, Uncle Dick, I did not meet him uh, until uh, Amsterdam, 1996. Yeah, so, and I think that's a different Uncle Dick then. So I no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe no. not. Who knows? Well, I know Dick. Ironic. I can get Dick on the you show. Know, <laughs> small world. Yeah. So tell us how he fits in that picture. I'm I'm fascinated. Uh, me, Dick Cohen. Yeah. Uh, he, he was hanging out in Amsterdam. He was uh, spent a lot of time at, at Positronics, and uh, that's that's where I saw him mostly. Um, just a, a really good guy, man. Um, most people are familiar with him from Normal. And, and how uh, did he fit in with the pick with the um, with uh, Frank and, and and that whole crew? 
the book. Oh, oh he he didn't. Uh, not from my side of things. Not, okay. You know, okay. I, I just make that clear. I, I met him in Amsterdam, and he uh, he returned with Todd and Hillary uh, when ah, Todd that's came where, back. In, that's uh, where he tied in. That. Okay. And Very so good. That's, I think it, I think their relationship has something to do with journalism. You know. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll uh, we'll holler at, at Rye who who was sniffing up that particular tree. So uh, yeah, the other thing is that uh, in the testimony that Rye dug up, it seemed like Frank had actually learned to grow from another guy. Um, yeah. Tell us about that guy, because I'm that guy. Frank was just like the ballsiest James Bond dude, and there was just some humble grower behind him, or. Yeah, no, no, no. In fact, Frank is even one of the humble guys. Um, you know, uh, of course, I, I can discuss the things that are publicly known. Absolutely. But I, I Absolutely. really wouldn't want to jeopardize anybody. I wouldn't want you to in any way, shape, or form. And, and, and I think and everyone so I can, understands that. I, I can tell you um, that all those people were very accomplished growers. Um, you're not pulling that off not knowing what you're doing. Um, was Frank the know-all, be-all, end-all? I, I couldn't tell you Frank was the person that got me the breeding schedules and the genetics, and, and that's what I know. I'm not, I'm, I was and not by the time you got them from him, he was certainly... I never even met anybody else in their crew. You know, In fact, I never even dealt with Frank directly. So this was, uh, this was all unexpected, and so when that happened, I was given... You know, I don't know if the suggestion to go out to these places and salvage whatever could be salvaged um, because a lot was being lost. And uh, it was a shock to everybody. I mean, you, you wouldn't even believe it if I told you, but it's, an, it's, it's a fact. God's truth. His own wife did not know what he was doing. Um, Frank ended up losing his entire family over this ordeal. And uh, talk about a slickery dude, man. Um, uh, you know, clearly, uh, the first thing that I was taught was if nobody knows, nobody knows. Uh, people only know what you tell them. And the second you tell somebody, go ahead and figure they're going to tell somebody else, especially when we're talking about uh, this important of information. You just don't trust anybody with that. Don't trust with somebody, don't trust somebody with it to find out to be wrong, you know? Right. And that's how they got through. Uh, as long as they did, um, the the four houses that were busted were just the four houses that were busted. That was um, the takeaway that I got from that as well. And and the other question that I I couldn't help but put together was that over the years, all of us have seen these caves coming up on the news. Ryan, you've heard of these underground grow yeah. caves? Yeah, no, for sure. Kind of yeah. all over the country and. Is that like a propri- and other countries? Yeah, or is that like a proprietary technique, or is that like a lot of people do that? Well, you know, I I would imagine it's a copycat and a combination of the two copycat and pri- uh, you know the, their own trademark. Uh, it's very efficient to grow underground, um, especially when using CO two and uh, for cooling. Uh, you know, the CO2 gets trapped in the ground versus on a, on a ground plane, uh, CO2 just wants to leak out everywhere. So you can actually utilize CO2 very efficiently underground. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah. So, and, and then cooling, you know. So I'm sorry, I cut you off. So these four houses got busted, yes. but there was more going on and everything wasn't lost yet. Uh, w- right, certain things, but, you know, just like anything... Uh, some things are only at certain places, and uh, these things are, are guarded close to uh, the person in control. <laughs> you know, you keep your, your, your things tight. That's what your business is operating off of. And so, yes, things got lost at the house in Lancaster. There were so many different varieties there. It, it was really just a, a plethora of, of varieties, uh, kind of a testing spot, uh, actually. Uh, to, to go through there and look at all the containers, it, it would just, it's like going through a candy store, you know, just looking at all the different varieties that were in all these pots. Um, they were doing a lot of work, and uh, that was apparent. Um, this place in Lancaster uh, was considered small and controllable. 
uh, it was close to Frank's home, and uh, that's that's why this was here. That's why this was an important spot, you know, so where he slept, you know, right next to where he hung his hat. Right. And, that, and so uh, that's one of the ones they did uncover. Yes. And and when I was uh, given the genetics, the, the purpose was to cross them and give them back, you know, make more seeds and give them back. And then my... Uh, my bonus was to keep the parental lines for myself. So I think that's a good deal that everyone would. Uh, that's, that's the good, way that's it should good, work, right? Exactly. exactly. That's, that's it. Good. No, nobody gave me a penny. You know, this was all just done on the cuff and uh, completely secretive. You know, nobody can know these kind of things. And then at that, you know, the the facts come when you try to tell people, and it's just unbelievable, man. They're, you know, I I don't blame people for being skeptical, but. Uh, the facts are there, and it doesn't require me. I mean, I can point the way, but they're there. So the other question that people had is, like, directly on the topic of OG Kush and the connection um, cool. to to that story. Can you paint that picture a little more clearly and, and maybe connect some of the dots? Because we steered – the topic was so awesome last week, we got pretty distracted. Okay, uh, specifically? So you were talking about the kryptonite. Uh, yes. And that that seems to be very confirmed. The source. Uh, yeah. So, was that yeah, the, that a strain that they had produced in their breeding schedules? Yes. The, the these things got different slangs according to where they were distributed, but the things that went out across the country, not just Southern California. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're talking. You know, 87, I mean, we're talking tons, man. You know, 100, 100 tons a year just on what they found. Um, these things went to different places, uh, like the hash plant went to New York, uh, the, the Northern Lights 5, uh, Afghan went to uh, uh, Florida, which is also uh, the basis of the kryptonite, or what people called the kryptonite. Um, the Northern Lights, that's like Adam said, that's just a, a name up there in Seattle for good weed, just like in Los Angeles, which nobody brings up, Dr. Dre, man, the chronic. Yeah, chronic. <laughs> you know, is, is like I mean, that, term the chronic, weed. Northern Lights 5, Skunk 1, Big Bud. And I know it's a, a coined name, and uh, Sirius Seeds had, you know, their chronic, but it's Northern Lights 5, Skunk 1, Big Bud. And, uh, in fact, that was, <laughs> that was actually the example of the breeding schedule that was given to me. Um, the thing about this schedule is everything is a three-way. So uh, w you could plug in anything you'd like into this schedule, but it requires three things. Interesting. And what would be the goal of, of this, this breeding operation? Uh, what would be the goal? Like, what's the purpose of using three things in it? And, you know, you said you could plug any sort of like an equation or a formula where you yeah. could plug any three yeah, things a, in. It, yeah, it's a formula that requires three things. And then what does um, it do with those three things? I'm sorry? Like, what does it do with, how do those three things interact? It, it, it's, it's made to line up the dominant and recessive traits so that they come dominant simultaneously. Ah. Uh, I, I used to call it gene fusion. You know, that was my term. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're somewhat forcing things together that wouldn't naturally happen. So per can se, you explain? Unless you time it properly. To listeners who don't, who, you know, don't, don't have a... a you know, more advanced understanding of genetics. How would you explain what's going on there? So you're, you're breeding these plants, you're crossing them to the point where the things that are pretty unlikely to come out have all come out. Is that what well, you're making? The, you're, you're making the traits or you're causing by through selection, uh, the traits that you desire to be linked sexually. And then you're, you're timing those, those crosses between those interactions between the males and the females with the dominant and recessive habits of those plants. Um, everybody's made a cross and it doesn't come out with what they thought it should have. Right. Um, uh, that would mean uh, to me, the trait is recessive inside the opposite sex that you're looking at. So the male in most cases, right? Because everyone's yeah, looking so at that, that female Yeah, so that female plant. you're looking for is hiding inside that boy. Uh, male dominant, female recessive. It, not that this is some form of like uh, carved in stone law. 
just saying that's the well. Yeah, you need to run another. You have to run another generation or two to get to that point. That's what like a lot of people right. do F ones, and then they, then that's a, the end all for them, right? And then other people try to go to an F two, and then F twos are all pretty crappy usually. Your high high percentage of crap on the yeah. F two, and then it get people get discouraged. But you need yeah. to go to the next step on the F three, F four. Those things become then things start to put, get get back to where you sort it out again. Yeah, so that's kind of where I think a lot of people. Don't want to get to that. They don't want to do anything because you can't really do anything with those. The the like an F two. You know what I mean? You're kind of like, eh. You know what are you gonna do with that? That one's kind of like booty booty run basically, and you just go through the numbers. It's just there, part of the process. And you look for the there's, but there's still gonna be one or two. It's just their numbers are so low. You right. know, so you but really, you, after you isolate those one or two, they then you have go clumps yeah. of the good stuff. Right? Exactly, and then as you go into the next generation those expressions come out and then you're like, okay, now I'm starting to see a few. And then they progressively get by five and six and they start to get to the point where now it looks like a whole, you know, the whole room starts to look normal, like the same. So the same. that's the idea. All based on selection. Yeah. Well, is there any difference between one of those like F5, F6s or an IBL or is it an IBL at that point? That's a question I've always had. It, I mean, yeah, you've isolated the chromosome. Once you're at that, so like, far. yeah, yeah, at F, at F5, F6, it's like, an IBL, yeah, yep. Okay. But and then back crossing, you know, that's also going back to the parent is a crucial step. Yeah. And uh, and then at that, you know, what what I'm explaining is actually one aspect. Of this. Okay, so you can imagine a little tree chart, and you got your three things: males, females of two things, and then uh, a female of of the third thing, only female. Then simultaneously you're running three other schedules of the same things in different combinations. And so um, it's quite elaborate, but what it works into is basically a braid in a sense. And uh, proof's in the pudding. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's kind of what I was picturing, and that's sort of where I was going with that question. So I'm glad you answered it that way. That a braid that's was it. exactly what I'd envisioned. It's like these three mm -hmm. schedules where the genetics sort of overlap, and um, it's three schedules of three things. So, so got a nine, like I said, it's quite elaborate. Yeah, definitely. Not not something you're pulling off in your closet. No, for sure. You need some space. Not for anytime that. quickly, for sure. So now all the results of this, or, or the good results of this, that's what was going out and becoming the kryptonite, et cetera? Yeah, well, progressive work, you know. Um, they're always trying to improve the thing. First of all, they would throw test things out, and then the thing that the people liked the most, that's what they would ship to that place. And uh, they would keep it. So that's uh, why it ended up getting this New York was hash plant, because they, they responded well in the test round. Yes, and so that continued to get that, you know. And if you got it here then it was because you knew somebody. You okay, know? and so Florida responded well to the, the kryptonite, crippy OG. What was called the kryptonite, the crippy. And, um, I, and I think anybody from Florida could, could understand that. You know that even though yeah, I saw people. I saw course, some people in the chat room saying they never heard of it and they're in Florida their whole life. But I mean, I, I only lived there for a few years, and I remember crypto. I remember crypto. And it wasn't. Yeah, I, it, was, it was shortened to crypto when I was there. I think. Yeah. For for sure, mid to late eighties. Yeah, it was like um, eighty seven or eighty six. In fact, Tommy Chong was on the cover of the July eighty nine edition of High Times, uh, holding a nice nug, and uh, that was that was from Frank's house. Was it was it kryptonite? Uh, you'd have to ask Tommy Chong. Uh, from what I understood, it was a Hawaiian Afghan. Okay. Right. Um, but but as far as him being able to say, oh yeah, that's uh, you know that's the kryptonite, you know, then I, you'd have to hear that from him. Um, but but for sure, that's what was going to Florida. That's the slang that they got there. So the Hawaiian Afghan was going to Florida, and they called it kryptonite. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying that Tommy Chong had okay. the Hawaiian Afghan. Oh, I'm sorry. In his okay. Hand. okay. And, uh, so, so what? What that, was that? And what was that? That cross that was going to Florida. That would have been Northern the Northern Lights, Lights Five Lights. Afghan. Right. So it'd be a Nor it'd be a Thai Afghan back cross Afghan. Very similar to Super Skunk. Super Skunk is Skunk Afghan back cross Skunk, or Skunk Afghan back cross Afghan. So that's the that's that breeding formula that. Yes. The cross. Yeah, and all these things yeah. were formulated with those, you know. Right, right, right. And and that's why when you start to use the schedule and these genetics, they have specific combining traits. That when you start linking these 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 uh, genetics back, that man, things link up. 
You know, you don't get, say, the hybrid vigor because they already have things uh, linking up inside them, you know. Uh, so, yeah. and, and it sounds like a lot of the calculations have been run through and people know, you know, you know, exactly what you're looking for in there to unlock, you know, these crosses that were. Yes. And where and when it's yesterday. going to come out and where you're going to be looking for it. So, I mean, that's, I guess the, the takeaway for the listeners is let's legalize it and uh, let people get back to work doing what they <laughs> yeah. were doing, man. That's it. You know, that's the fact, you know, we, it's, it's a strange thing, you know, and these guys, I, I know there's, there's people that feel the same way I do, and uh, they're just, again, never, never were trying to actually be criminals, you know. We were made that. You know, we're supplying a need. Now, to what um, degree was there, by the time I was involved in the black market, right. it was highly criminalized. You know what I mean? You were, you were sure. consorting with other criminals in general, especially on sure. the East Coast. To what degree was that in play at that time? You were just, were you just kind of staying on your own, obviously, the secret's a secret, right? Yeah, uh, nine, 90 was my launch. You know, 91 is when I got started. Um, you know, worked on worked on the, the schedule. I think 91 would be a great time machine thing to go back and just, like, run back, grab as many strains as you can, jump back in the time machine, per, you'd, you'd kill it. Cause Where's it was, Doctor Who, man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good year. Yeah. Everybody was doing sure. something, it seemed like. It, you know, I call it a charmed moment in time. I mean... It was crazy, and uh, it was exciting, you know. These were important things. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys in their stories, they all share how they thought it was so insignificant at the time. You know, they didn't remember these things because, you know, it was just a bag seat. Mm -hmm. Well, for the guys that were doing the work, um, it, it, it was known. It was very clearly understood. Um, and it really settled in when you have the federal government saying most potent varieties cannabis ever tested. Um, you know, his average uh, was 19.75%, the uh, peaks that they found in their testing. And again, remember, these things were, were cut down uh, ahead of time, actually. Right, they were cut and down And they still tested really out at 23%. 23% um, on stuff that was cut down prematurely. In, 19, in 1991. Nice stuff, nice stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, Hey, I, guys, cover me for one minute, please. Yeah, I got you, I, bud. I got you. Bathroom break. Thank you. Yeah, do your thing. Somebody, we got somebody in the chat talking, talking about the PIF now. we got the PIF. The PIF oh, yeah, so on. that's one of the cool follow-ups from last week. I got reached out by uh, the PIF, my dream strain, right? So I got reached out by a dude who told me that they brought the PIF up from Miami to New York and passed it to the Dominicans. Then I got hollered at by this other dude who knows this dude who's a big bouncer in a Dominican club mm -hmm. who has the PIF in a clone-only form. Nice. That maybe, maybe does not align with that story. Now, then our buddy Swerve, Swerve oh, hollered at me and said all of the stuff that was involved in that thing with Biggs and Matt Stang was all PIF. So that makes it all sorts of crazy. So what does the chat room have to say about the PIF? Said it was only I'm in New York. Said that it was all in New York. Yeah. Um, Cubans and Dominicans, that would say. Cubans and Dominicans. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, too. Mm -hmm. I agree, chat room. But I don't know. And everybody said they had it in New York, basically. Of course. And they, it's the skatey 80s. They had it in Harlem. And mm -hmm. again, in Patterson, they had the skateys, And it was around. Like, it was certain places you could get it on a ridiculously overpriced retail end. Um, and, but the clones were obviously therefore really closely held. And supposedly, I know Tierra Rojo has a black haze from Florida. Yeah. That's where the interesting Florida angle and, is that he says is super piffy. Yeah, and that's what they were talking about is the main thing in Florida is the black haze. The black haze. Yeah. And there, so that's... That's uh, confirmed on the chat room. So chat room confirms that. That was probably the main thing. But is that the same as the Dominican piff is the question, chat room? Mm-hmm. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, the, we'll find out. That we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, Facebook. I'm back with you guys. Cool. That Thanks, way. Dave. That was so, quick, man. Quick uh, message. <laughs> quick message. Right on. Um, well, uh, let's bring it back. We got a couple minutes left, and then we're going to start wrapping up, man. But uh, Very good. 
I yeah, think, I'm sorry, I forgot where we were at. Yeah, no, I mean, we were just talking about uh, those genetics, how thorough the breeding schedules were. Uh, what I think is really interesting that comes out of the whole thing is that it had all been worked out to the point where it was... Were, were new things introduced, or was it running through these same sort of core lines to find the most exceptional versions? Um, the core lines were the main goal, of course, just, just evolving, securing what they began with. Um, other things were incorporated as, you know, tests, whatnot, um, but I can't speak to any of those things. Right. Uh, you know, now, I, do you I, know where, like, what, where their knowledge about how to, how to grow herb indoors came from? They were obviously pioneers in that field. Like, that wasn't really being done, certainly not on that scale. Yeah, no, in fact, that was part of, uh, you know, again, I'm hearing uh, stories uh, secondhand, which are, are close. Um, I can't describe how close, but very close. And from what I understood was that they were changing light bulbs in a, in a warehouse and actually got sunburned. <laughs> so they were changing like... Um... And it's like, talk about the light bulb going off above your head. Right. It, it's like, hey... Let's let's see what's up with growing it indoors, and then of course high times is just the always go to of keeping people up to date at the time. I mean, it's the only way we had to communicate anything. Uh, were people we were worried communicating with high times, or did people generally feel safe? Well, you know, everybody says they don't feel safe, but they still go buy it. You know, right. and even the people that say they don't subscribe to it, you'll be having conversations with them, and then all of a sudden they'll bring something up. It's like, hey. Yeah, everyone reads some high times is what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, some most know, handed down magazine is sold. Like it gets passed to at least five or six people probably get. For it. sure. Whereas other ones. And the other weird fact about them that I discovered is that like, you know, magazines obviously in general are dying. They have a growing print subscriber base. For, it's like the highest in their history or something or the high. Yeah. Yeah. They should be doing all right. So uh, let's let's bring it back around. We're in our wrap up, but I want to keep running over with you if that's cool, cool. man. Um, so these lines, they're out there. Uh, what were the other regional ones? The hash plant to New York, the kryptonite to Florida. What else was? Uh... The tie was here in California. You know, we would get the tie, and it's just the the creeper tie. The tie that they used was a three way tie. Also, uh, that's where you get the the hints of the lemon. Uh, you also get the chocolate, and then there was also an oily fino. Uh, the, it, I, it reminded me of like a, an oiled cloth, and, and I'm sure people have had that flavor. Yeah, like real small buds too, like purpley small buds. Yeah, like like yeah, purpley. Well, it's the chocolate will purple, which is the chocolate. Because I had yeah, maybe that was chocolate. I had New York. So did I, chocolate I, I, tie I, taste like chocolate? Absolutely. Okay. Hershey's. Really, like In milk fact, chocolate. When you have true chocolate tie. You'll laugh to yourself when you understand what's happening in OG. Um, the chocolate is like an indica version of Thai. Like it, it you wouldn't even say that's a sativa. Mm -hmm. you know? As far as the effect, you mean? And the flavor, yeah, real that hashy. Dry, it's also real hashy, real hashy. dark chocolate, chalky cocoa flavor, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's chocolate Thai. And so are these like? Is the chocolate Thai around? That was that. What was that? A specific phenotype of this or? Correct, a specific pheno, the and, chocolate. And, and so new, is that in your genetic stash, Vault? Yes, it is. That's pretty yes, awesome. It is. Yeah, well, the original tie is in my genetic stash, and to be able to break those phenos out of it wouldn't be anything but time, you know. Uh, I did lose genetics when I got busted, you know. The, the feds did raid my house, and uh, even though I was being followed, you know, in my mind, it's like, uh, what am I doing? You know, I'm not doing anything. They, they had a mistaken identity of who they thought I was based on the genetics that they're testing. Um, I had mentioned before how these genetics went out uh, over a year period between 96 and 97. But then between my initial arrest in 97 to my indictment in 98, um, you know, those genetics had spread over many states. You know, they had said uh, Montana, Wyoming, Utah. I mean, you just talk about the western United States. And so somehow they felt that 
I had something to do with this. When in reality, these are all the seeds that just went out, you know, and they, they get passed, especially when, when people get seeds for free. They're, they're really anxious to handle. So they were linking all these based on the fact that they were over 20% THC? Is that... Is that... And D- DNA, DNA testing and chemotype. Really? So they DNA tested, and because the I mean the They've states you're DNA- talking about, the states you're talking about are all each individually have a strain that fits into this puzzle somewhere to me. Like the super pungent, I don't know, dude. I'm thinking about Shoreline, Hog's bed- Breath, all of those really potent hash planty strains. Mm-hmm. Um, they all they all still stem back from this, you know, all those Middle America strains, possibly yeah. even the original gum, Adam. That was Indiana, right? Indiana, right? Exactly. And, and if we could get freedom of information on their testing, it'd be they know more about these genetics than we do. That's that was the other crazy part of my conclusion going through my case, and I even said this to Rob Clark, you know, when I was telling him what I had went through. And he said, ah, it just sounds like an overjealous prosecutor, you know, just trying to come at you with uh, scare you, you know. And then the, the, the big clincher is, how did she even learn to talk like that? I mean, only guys like us know how to talk like that. Meaning you she, know, she's she talking knew her about stuff things as as... that people shouldn't even know, actually. <laughs> and uh, the fact is, is, they've been DNA testing since they could. And they've been running a, a map of... All the bus, any federal bus, they take a plant sample and they send it into the lab. And that's logged and it's, it's kept. And then they compare how these genetics are moving across the country. you got to imagine that that's part of the things they do, right? Yeah, I would, I would think Information, so. intelligence. I mean, the Dutch are all about that, too. Like, they took crazy amounts of information on every grow that they ever busted. And, you from know, the setup down to the from genetics. From the setup down to, to the genetics, everything, clipped every plant tested them i mean it's, it's definitely like uh and i'm sure they collaborate sharing information too oh, for you sure. know between I, our cops and their cops and the international effort against drugs i was told by my attorney that those plants that left the bel air house were loaded up into trucks and taken directly to lax so they flew out somewhere to be tested Conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're definitely conspiracies, just not theories. Yeah, yeah, they're conspiracies. You know, and, and in time, these things will come out. I, it might take twenty years. We may, we may be sitting on our porches in our rocking chairs and hearing about these things, but they exist, and we paid for it. Taxpayers paid for these things. Why don't we have access to it? That's the other great thing. When it does finally come out, we'll we're getting it, a lot of our money's worth. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, we, if it if it becomes legal nationwide, like like we expect it will, then they'll have to release the information because it'll no longer be even relevant for them. You know what I mean? At that point, you know, my my theory is people that are taking credit for these things, um, they can do that, and nothing happens to them because the feds know what's been done. You know, you can only say uh, I'm a hitman if you're not. <laughs> Right. You know, you, you can get away with being a hitman because you never killed nobody. And nothing happens to you, yeah. Nothing will ever happen to you. They'll they'll laugh, you know. Whatever, you get off by telling yourself you're a hitman, that's cool. But the second you take somebody's life, now you are a hitman. And and any hitman would never say, hey, I'm a hitman. <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean? It just I'm, maybe it's a poor example or analogy. Well, but, but it's still I mean that's a, that's something same. that the feds are investigating, and that's sort of the ridiculousness of it. How many you had twelve? We we are wrapping up, and and, and we're going to wrap up after this. But you had twelve federal agents following you, right? You said you said twenty four. Yeah. Actually, twenty four. So, yeah, around the, yeah clock. the way I understand it is they it's a it's a six six people are on me at any given time. Uh, Con, uh, with with another six behind them, so twelve, and that's one shift. So and then two they shift of those to another twelve, which wow. rotate off six and six. You know that so tw- that to me, hunting you because because you growed, growed because yeah. you because you grew. You're hunting you because you grew. Because you grew. Did you grow? Until they followed you. Not not just because I grew. It was what I was growing. That's what mind-boggled them. You know, anybody that I ever showed up in front of in my path, 
I pretty much I've set them in their in their seat. You know, they they typically don't believe where I was coming from, uh, but the proof is in the pudding. And once they see these things, they lose their mind. You know, I, I believe they act different than they normally would. And so that's why I don't really, you know, hold so much against these people. It's not like just one person did it. It's like everybody, um, which, which is why I just sit here and wait patiently. Uh, because I, the people can only be taken advantage of in the way that they are because of the state of our laws. If these were actual businesses, pff, smash all this stuff. It, it wouldn't be happening, you know. That's the takeaway from the story, I think. Well, we definitely want to thank you for being on again. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, Dave. Uh, you got it, another fellas. entertaining show for sure. And thank you, everybody, for your interest. You know, um, this yeah. is a, a, a group effort. For sure, and you're and you're and you're a regular listener. Every, also, we didn't just get you from out of nowhere. You've been listening to the show almost every week, right? That's right. So, I'm a fan, Adam. There you go. So <laughs> anybody who needs not any, only a friend, I'm a fan. <laughs> right. So if you guys, you know, anybody out there who's, you know, you can just look on our, uh, every week. He'll be here, so you can always give him a quick message. Yeah, look in the chat room. Get in the chat room. I, I see there's Dave a few questions here. for you there. There's a few questions there for you already. So That's thanks, right. guys. Thank thanks. you, and uh, we will talk soon. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Man, that's crazy. He growed for a long time. <laughs> he growed real good. He done gone growed. Done done yeah, done done growed. <laughs> you can tell me they got in trouble just because you <laughs> growed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I got a text message at that time, and I was looking at that and got distracted. Uh, see, you shouldn't read text messages like that. I know. We did that whole story that it lowers your IQ more than smoking herb. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. We know that. Multitasking. We know that. Multitasking don't with do it. Your, don't do it. Your eye device, weed. which is fundamentally what we're doing here when I'm looking at the timer. Okay, guys. So, uh, yeah, we. I mean, again, there's a lot of it, it. Always segues to these different things, and one of the things I think we need to do is then like um, sort of focus in on other strains too to kind of like put the pieces of the puzzle back from the opposite direction. You know, like what, like uh, well, like the G13 would be a good story to kind of figure out because that's one of those ones that everybody seems to know something and not. You know what I mean? So I know that Kay knows a bit about that, and we could probably get him on the show. That would be, be awesome. really cool. And uh, but I, I think that's one of those strains has to be done. Trainwreck would be a good one too, just because it's not that long ago. It's Arcada. We can get to somebody. The E32 story has got to be clarified whether it's the. You know, that's the E row number plant number 32. Is that it, what it really was? Because that's what I've been told. That's what I've been told as well. Exactly. So, like, you know, even though those might be really easy to clear up, I think as we do those, that'll piece, that'll also fill the puzzle in. I a want bit. the Big Sir Holyweed because that's Ryan. Have you ever heard of Big Sir Holyweed? No. You've heard of Trainwreck, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what, we what strains do you think we need to hear the history of? We covered OG Kush, Sour Diesel, Chem Dog, and Bubba Kush. I mean, the, I'm just thinking of, like I said, all the strains that what what people would call good weed on the East Coast, and you know, like we, you know, we've covered the OG. I mean, that was one of the ones. But I mean, the only other one that people say all the time that I hear on the East Coast. Do you guys have Northern Lights? Well, Northern Lights. Northern Lights were just covered. And, and yeah, and that's so. But, but that would that, be also. I mean, that could be another get some people from Seattle and from that area to kind of like clarify a few of the things because sure, that you know, good. like again, I only I I got my from Holland. You know, people coming to Holland because luckily, you know, that guy Wolf Siegel, he has a show actually. We should listen to his podcast and he hit us up uh, and we should reach out to him because I saw him correct someone on the true history of the Northern Lights from who had what in Seattle. So we can okay. hit him up. Cool. Yeah, definitely. We can cross uh, information there. Yeah. So, um, quick shout outs to uh, my lovely wife, Cece, who's putting together the East Store, which will be launched next week on Monday. So, we're giving her a little break to little break. perfect it. So, that's store. shop.hoodlabstore.com. Dude, I'm derping around all show today. Something happened midway through the show. Shop.hoodlabstore.com. And the code is it's gonna be TADS. TADS, that's right. All TADS, caps, all caps, TADS, T-A-D-S, 420. And, and what, did that, be, what do you get for that? You're going to get 10% off of your whole order. So. Nice. Solid. That's a nice we'll chunk, and we'll just select all your stuff. We'll probably throw some other stickers in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll hook it up. Cool. And we will we will have Adam Dunn show T-shirts. Yeah, up the Adam the Dunn the show is that going to be the, the exclusive Debrex. site where they're going to get sold for now? Oh, for now, of course. Nice. Yes, yes. yes, that's where you can get your Adam Dunn show shirts. Like Adam has the only one of. They're dope, and they're on <laughs> the, the number you know, one and only shirt. I, I I'm, MT, so. I'm declaring one, Adam. Actually, no, why do you have one? Don't you? Yeah, I have one. What? Yes. See, there you go. 
wasn't the only one. Okay, well, make a third one. It's because I growed good. He growed well. Yeah, I he, growed. He really growed really sh- good. Real uh, shout out to my killer little son there. He's finally, phone. I found the phone. That's good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, phone found. Lost daddy's phone for a couple of days, but little Nick, NYC. Um, shout out to my mom and Kojak holding it down out there at the farm. And, uh, you know, like I said, keep an eye out for Hood Lab online. That's going to be it. Oh, and also come down on Saturdays and visit us at the uh, Big Wonderful, which is on 26th and Arapaho. It's pretty awesome. Three-acre outdoor beer garden with uh, with us. What, it's like a beer garden slash farmer's market slash food, food festival. Food, yeah. It's, it's, it's most, awesome. A bunch of, bunch of uh, you know, food trucks, fresh veggies, all sorts of good stuff. Cover all bases. And you can come check us out again. We have our stuff there. And dog. as it gets colder... Are there any hipsters there? Oh, Probably my God. Not. Of course there Probably are. Not. But it's dog friendly. I know. It's I, dog I friendly. It's kid Gee, friendly. It's all friendly. It's hipster friendly. It's friendly. All right. I got to definitely shout out my beautiful wife, Reese, and our amazing little baby, Farron, who are listening today. And I'm going to... Oh, yeah. It's f- teething? Home. Teething? Teething. Dude, teething. <laughs> she was freaking Back out Back in the day, morning. they would just dose them with like... Weed, right? Opium or yeah. something yeah. like that. Some, whiskey. Some JD, man. whiskey is the way to go. Though, yeah, yeah, no, she was freaking out, but she has this one toy. I never, that I never gave Nick whiskey. If I rub it on her gums, not... she like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so like yes. I spent like 45 minutes this morning. She was in her little swing, and I was just like. <laughs> I feel like by the time you're done doing that, you're going to be hammered, too, though. You know, you rub a little whiskey on her I'm gums. I'm just talking about She's a little rubber whiskey. toy. She's but. not rubbing whiskey. Uh, my wrong. grandma rubbed whiskey on my. Like, Come here, let me put a uh, uh, scotch uh, on your gums. Obviously. Look what happened. How long? Into, how old were you when they, she stopped? Like fifteen. Yeah. Last <laughs> year. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to brother Aaron. Listen to the show. Not in studio today because he's signing up for classes. But yo, he needs to deliver me a Jimmy John sandwich if he's delivering for Jimmy Jimmy John's. That's what I'm saying. Fastest in the West, right? Right. But he's the slowest human in yeah, the they, East. They got that kind of commercial. Talks like this. His name's Ed. I don't know about Name's that. Ed, sir. Do you have Super any shout outs? Shout out to Crunchy wherever he is. Well, yeah, we're, we're, shout out to Crunchy and his uh, next. Hopefully, we can get him down to the, our to our spot. And uh, yeah, well, yeah. and he said he's been working really hard on the Chefs and Cannabis show, and I know he knows Sweet. like legit internationally Dude, famous can chefs. Can they come so. and cook for us during the show? Yes. Maybe they can come yeah. visit Cook when they're in town, not that during the nice. show. Yes. Yes. Um, right on, guys. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, thanks. He okay. Says. Okay. Thank you. Shout outs. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Please subscribe on iTunes. I will definitely update the iTunes this week. We've had like a plethora of cascading computer problems. Both my laptop, Adam's phone, all sorts of computer. I wonder if Mercury's in retrograde. Um, but yeah, subscribe all over the place. Like us on Facebook. We'll talk to you next week. See you guys.